You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another episode of All Talk. Uh, This week, very pumped to be back in the saddle after a week off last week. You and I, Eddie, went and sunned our collective packages uh, at various spots around this great nation of ours. We're back. Our packages are tanned. They are. And, and we're ready to rip in. 100%. I've Another actually week. missed being in the hot seat, Tom, to be honest. Yep. And we come back with one of the great guests. I mean, we go away, we sun ourselves, we bring back one of the great guests all the time. Yep. Willie Mason, New South Wales legend, rugby league legend, uh, all all round legend. Premiership basically. winner, Clive Churchill winner. I'm assuming he won a World Cup, but I'm just assuming. I don't even know if we ended up asking that, but he did play for the great nation of Australia. Um, he, he had a dalliance with rugby union. He's been all over the world, and he's just a big and larger than life character. And he's he's become a friend, dear friend, dear friend, friend of the show. Christmas card stuff, hundred percent. So it was great to sit down with Willie, excavate his thoughts on state of origin, talk to him about his career, his life, where he's at now. Uh, a terrific interview, punters and dribblers. We just absolutely nailed this. Uh, it's a, it was a real, it, it's a real gem. This Kudo, one. kudos to us. Well, Pat's on the back for you. This and I might too. be one of the great interviews of all time. Well, it's our zenith. Hey, hey, Michael Parkinson, kick rocks, buddy. You've been bested, mate. Kick rocks. Punters and dribblers, Willie Mason. In doing some, you know, incredible research, of course. Really, once we I, expect, I expect nothing less. Yeah. Um, but so you were, do you sign with the Hunter Mariners when you were how 16. old? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. So that was Super League time. Obviously, what was it like as a young person there? Like, do do is there much pressure on you in that mm. area? Like in that time? Considering what the young kids cop now, it was none. Yeah. And I think that was, I think that was great. The 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 era that I come through, like they didn't really care if you're a gun schoolboy. If you made this and that, and I was in all those, you know, those sides that you needed to make and all that kind of stuff, and like, no one cared, yep. which was great. Like where we we knew Suali was coming fucking three years ago. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like you knew that he was going. There was video footage on him. He was on YouTube. There's all this. All you hear about is like fuck, Willie Mason kid, or this and that, Chris Walker, and we're all coming through, all making like the junior kangaroos and all that sort of shit. Newcastle boy. Um, but are the Knights trying to get you? Yeah, well, like, the a bit thing of a- is, so this is what happened. So I went to the, so I was like, we grew up in government houses and all that sort of shit. I had five, five sisters, two brothers. My old man died when I was 17. So in 97, Hectic. super. So he died at the end, end of that. So I was a, I was that prodigy kid since I was about fucking 12 anyway. Mm-hmm. So I only played because of dad. Since you were 12, like you Yeah, were, well, they, they get earmarks when you're about 12 years old. So you were dominating system, back yeah. then. But in Newcastle, they just had a great system there. Yeah. It was back then they, and I thought they still had that now. But that's probably why we're not developing that many juniors like New South Wales wide. Mm. So they, I'll go back to so under twelves. So we'd play the best under twelve. So twelves to fifteens, you're in the rep system, right? So the best in Newcastle. Newcastle's a big catchment too. Same as Illawarra and Canberra, Western Sydney, and then Maxville up near Coffs Harbour and that. So there was five five groups, right? Which is pretty much the whole fucking New South Wales, mm. and you'd play against each other. So I'd play against the Illawarra team. They had Luke Patton in it. They had fucking Luke Bailey and all these sort of blokes. Yeah. So the Western suburbs, Western suburbs, Minicello was in there. Me and Minnie marked each other on the wing. <laughs> 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 fucking hilarious. Um, in under 12s, you know, um, Canberra, they had like Villa Santi and all these. So we all come through the system. By the time you get to 15, 16, then you play Harold Mats, and then you come through the system, SG Ball, Jersey Fleet, Reserve Grade, First Grade. That's the pathway. Yeah. But... So I went from uh, so I did that 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s. Did miss, missed out on Harold Matts, which I thought my whole life was over. So you, did, you didn't get picked. No, I didn't up. get picked, yeah. I, I, no, I've tried for Harold Matts, so yeah. I just didn't make it. And I thought, yeah. like, what do you reckon? This, what this, happened? This is like, this is when it gets political. And that's what I always tell the fucking um, the, <laughs> the younger kids, I'm like, this is doesn't mean shit, Harold Matts, because like I said, I didn't make Harold Matts. It wasn't because of fucking, it wasn't because of talent, because just say, the, the selector didn't like my dad or some shit, like, gets really political right, and petty. Okay. Right. Yeah. I said, when you're like 17, 18, they can't fucking not pick you. You know, so like, fuck. But at that time, it means everything to you. you Were know, you like, big then? Did you show up? I was up? like a center, like a sort of like a center, skinny, fast, sort of like fucking rangy sort of thing, you know? Like, okay. Um, so I always played like 5'8", center, all really? that kind of stuff. So I understood, yeah. 
and fullback, all that kind Jeez, of that stuff. Is that why you? That must obviously be why you have a bit more of a rugby yeah. mind. Yeah, and then, then I just sort of grew into this fucking body. <laughs> That's so funny. If you being like, "Whoa, what the fuck's happening?" Oh, I'm just fucking. Well, I'm just from like huge. six foot two or three and like, and like ninety five <laughs> kilos to like one preseason, sixteen, seven, six five hundred and fifteen <laughs> in one preseason. Jesus Didn't even God. lift the weight. Not one weight. Wow. Just bang. Just fucking grew, and I was, and I, but I was still fast, right? Because yeah. I was, I was a state runner and all that kind of stuff. So I kept that mobility, okay, and I'll sell this pretty much a prototype for a fucking back row, or front row. Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyhow, I come through the system. So under 16s, that's when, that's when Super League come, right? So I ended up playing that, uh, playing Super League that year, 97. So I was 16, I was 17 years old. Ended up playing uh, 17s, making the junior Australian 17s. Then I got moved up to under 19s and then even playing reserve grade. So when I was like 17, I was playing all those three and I was just a oh, beat. Oh, wow. Yeah. So all for the Mariners? Yeah, That's all right. for the Mariners. Yeah. So I was only uh, 17 there. And then, so dad died, and that was, fuck, that just threw a big spanner in the works, you know I what I mean? Imagine, so I was yeah. like, fuck, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, I was, I barely really remember it, because it was just like a real fucked up sort of time. Yeah. Mm. And like, I was like very uh, highly fucking chased as a young kid. I had like Wayne Bennett ringing me, Tim Sheens. I'd fucking, I'd say I'm not home. And, no, and no. your old man was, you were saying, he was like a he was the part of he was the, He was, yeah, he three. was the big, big, big number one supporter, so... Had all these calls from all these first grade coaches, and mum was like, "Oh, no, 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 no!" Wouldn't answer, wouldn't answer the phone, wouldn't talk or anything no. like that. And I was just so I don't know, I was just fucking. Obviously, if there was anything close to depression, it was probably that. Yeah. Um, you just sort of shattered, and you're like, because all you want to do is play for your dad. I want mm. dad to see me play for Australia. I ended up playing for Australia, and you said, "Well, look at all the shit that I did in my career." Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wanna and come. then like, and I'm like, "Fuck!" I only played for him. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, that's why I play with so much passion and shit because I always used to think about him before every fucking game. Yeah, and right. sort of nearly like give me that like that extra emotion to be fucking like, I'll kill you. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what drove me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like little things like that. You know, like people don't really, probably don't know that. But they're the little things that fucking get you over the edge to be great, not just fucking average. You know what I mean? Mm. And that was probably it. You know, so it was a bit hard there. So I'd, uh, I had a few options but Newcastle didn't want anyone who was affiliated with Super League. And I was fucking filthy with them <laughs> for ages because I was only six, 17 years old. It's not like I was like, so Brett Camorley and um, Scotty Hill and all that, they played first grade for Newcastle. I, I didn't play first grade for Newcastle. No. I just fucking was, I went, you know, you know, why, you know why I went to the Mariners? Because I had fucking Nike. Oh, <laughs> yeah, More right. poor as shit and I wanted Nike boots. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's yeah. Like 100% why. Right, yeah. right. We all did because we're all from fucking houses. We're all yeah. houses. I was like, fuck you, yeah, got mad Nike gear. <laughs> fuck you, yeah, I'm going to the Mariners. What is the Mariners? <laughs> fuck, who knows? <laughs> fuck, Knights have got fucking Peerless or some shit brand. <laughs> fuck that. So that's what we were just saying. I said, I'm going go to I'll go to the Mariners. And then, I'll, you know, depends how long this lasts. And then we'll go to fucking... Go back to the See Knights. All I want to do is play for the Knights, all that kind of stuff. Do you get sold hard by the Mariners, or is like like is it, no? I mean, it's, no they got recruited pretty right? yeah, pretty highly. Mm. And I was like, okay, this is pretty good. Like, and then um, end up traveling around Australia like with the first grade team and everything. Like, they had a great concept, Super League. Yeah, because it was Australia wide, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So like we're training seventeen year olds and like being on a plane, staying yeah. in fancy uh, hotels, and I'm like, fuck, because I remember staying at um. South Bank Ridges in Brisbane, right? And that was the fanciest hotel I ever stayed at. And I always look at it when I go to Brisbane, like, fuck, I remember that. Yeah, it was like yeah. it was like the fucking best hotel I've ever stayed in. Yeah. Obviously now I'm staying a little bit better, but that was the best <laughs> yeah. time then. I was yeah. like, and my dad got to watch me play junior kangaroos, and that was probably the highlight, you know what See? I mean? Yeah. And then he fucking ended up passing away in October. So, but like I was filthy on the nights that they um they didn't want me back, they didn't want anyone affiliated. I'm like, fuck dude. I'm, I'm like it was one year. Mm. I'm not like a, a superstar or anything like that. I'm not like Brett Kamali and all these other guys, Richard Swain, all these sort of guys. So I had to like make a decision then. Did you explain to them that it was all about Nike boots? Yeah. I said, do you, know, and I went, do you guys have Nike boots? <laughs> no, nah, not anymore. <laughs> fuck it. I'm going back to fuck. Oh, Canterbury do. <laughs> that was sponsored by Nike. <laughs> so, I had a, I had, so usually in, so to head into 98 season, I would, you would usually go to pre-season November 97, right? So dad died in October. I don't even remember all that kind of shit. And then I didn't go down to Bulldogs until fucking February 98. So they've had like 12 weeks of preseason. It was oh, just like, okay. so I'm coming from Toronto West where there's no Lebanese people in Toronto West. Mm. So I moved to Belmore <laughs> from Toronto West, yeah. not knowing what a Lebanese person was or anything like that, a fucking kebab, all this sort of shit. I'm mm. just like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> Young fucking 17 year old kid. Yeah. And just going, like this is the, my last my my last recollection of Belmore was when they had a mad riot when um 
in Super League when they played against Wigan or something, mate. Remember the World Club Challenge? Oh, I don't recall 97. That. 97, you've been young. Yeah, 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 I know, but they had a big fucking riot and I played before it. <laughs> and in under like under 19s and I'm like oh, I'm not f- not flares and all that sort of shit oh Jesus and I'm like I don't want to fucking come what back here and then the only reason why I went there is because Michael Hagen Keith Onslow Michael Hagen was uh, Bobby Hagen who was the CEO's brother mm. remember Michael Hagen yeah Michael Hagen yeah he was the yeah, Hague, yeah, Hague, yeah, yeah. yeah so I love Hagen I had a great relationship with him he was picking me up every fucking like every weekend every second day like just driving me down to Belmore and I'm like I wouldn't even go down I was just in that fucking yeah, it was just in your life. Yeah, it was a like fucking it. awful period. Yeah, you know, I was just yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck footy anyway. I'm doing anything. Then I just yeah. sort of come to the. Uh, well, I just looked around. Like, well, how am I going to get this fucking family out of this shit? Mm. You know what I mean? Did like, you feel fuck- pressure? Were yeah, you like, I yeah. mean, I would. I, I fucking wanted that. You know, brother was in jail, and fucking the youngest was one year old. You know what I mean? Like, we mm. just lived in a commission house. And I'm like, fuck. I said, it was just fucking things happen for a reason, right? Sort of penny just dropped. I'm like, all right, well, it's fucking on me. Mm. And then I just went down to Sydney, just fucking, and then was so hell bent on fucking being whatever I fucking was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to get the first grade, bought mama house when I was 21. Wow. And then, yeah. That must have been a cool Yeah, feeling. it was mad, yeah. So, like, I, was, I hit the scene pretty hard. And it only took me, like, 32 games to play for Australia. 32 games? Yeah. Yeah. Dick. Wow. Yeah. So, so, when you then start, when you, st- how old are you when you debut? 19. 19. So, yeah. fucking hell, So, were you in your play for Australia when you were 19 as well? 21. 21. Yeah. Do wow. you start playing NRL and go... Okay, it's not as hard as I thought it may have yeah, been. Yeah, I mean, I I thought it was. I think I come through the school of like um, reserve grade was really fucking hard. Yeah. Because rem- remember, Super League and NRL joined back together, mm. so there was like twenty something teams. So there was fucking heaps of players, right? So the pathway to first grade was fucking hard. You had guys playing two hundred games back in reserve grade. You know what I mean? You're trying to ju- you're trying to leapfrog those guys. Yep. Um, you had guys like Robert Rell for 200 gamers, Steve Reed and 200 gamers played fucking one grand finals and all this Solomon Hamano, all these sort of blokes. And in 98, look, I got Jersey flag player of the year, the whole comp. And I was a year young, right? And I only signed a one year deal down with the dogs. And, um, so at that time, if I just say if I was in another club, I probably would have been playing first grade. And then they, they re- they signed Bradley Clyde in 99. He's my favorite player. Enrique Stewart, Darren Smith. Two back rolls at the time. So I sit there with Folksy and Folksy's like, oh, what do you want to do? Like, because Folksy's always always hard on me. And I, I was just wasn't Folksy's cup of tea because I was big and brash and like fucking confident as fuck. And he was yeah, like, loud. yeah, yeah. Like just just yeah. what I am. Like, and he just wasn't used to that shit. He was just used to fucking hard workers and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And like, he's like, you know, that hard work, you know, uh, talent was it hard work or outwork talent if, you know, talent doesn't work. I said, what if fucking talent works? Then you're fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I fucking had hard work and talent. So I was like, that, that'll fuck you up. <laughs> That's what, that was my attitude all yeah. the time. It was just like, well, I work hard and I got talent. So the fucking world's my oyster pretty much in my head. I was yes. just like, fuck it. And I said, I'll retire Bradley Clyde in a year. <laughs> 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 I said it to him. He you goes, said you. It to I said him. it. I said that. I said it to folks. I said I'll retire Bradley Clyde in a year. I'm going to sign here because like Canberra offered me like 350 grand, shitload that of money. Fuck, and I was only never played a first grade game. Oh, wow. shitload of money. Everyone fucking heap of money. I went nah because folks, he pissed me off because he fucking doubted me. I swear <laughs> he played fucking mind games. I said, right. nah, I'm staying here for fucking what 160 or something like that. And um, just so because just, just so I could just, just so I could fucking prove him wrong. I said, I'll retire Clyde in a year. And, and, and we ended up playing with Clyde and they got rid of him in 2001. I said, I told you, Clyde. <laughs> I see him at some time. Remember, remember I fucking retired you, Clyde? Do you remember that? Yeah, okay. Did you ever bring that up with folks? It was that mind game. All the time. Day? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, mate. He goes, I knew. He goes, he goes, I knew what you were like. He goes, I just, he goes. And plus, he got me on the cheap as well. <laughs> yeah, he goes, because I knew you were a stubborn prick. Yeah. And you just fucking, and you were hell bent on fucking p- proving me wrong. Mm. And I said, yeah, you fucking ass up. <laughs> God rest his soul. I love folks, you mate. Like, everyone tried to act like we were, had this mad beef. And, like, he was just disappointed that I left. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know, it wasn't it wasn't because of folksy. Yeah, you know, it was a lot deeper than that. It was just, like, board members and all yeah, that kind of right. shit. They tried to fuck the club over. So just say, imagine imagine me getting, like, I was 26, 27 at this time. And they're going, some different board members coming up to me going, all right, we want folksy gone. We want Malcolm Node gone. But you need to say X, Y, and Z. But you're going to have about three or four of your mates get the ass as well. Mm. But we'll give you, mate. We'll give you the captaincy and give you a pay rise. And I said, get fucked. 
but I got made out to be a fucking greedy pig yeah, right. and all that sort of shit. And I never come out and said anything because I'm like, well, you're trying to get rid of fucking four of my fucking best mates that are in that team, right? Because we're wild as fuck. They try to split us up. Mm. I was like, no. Yeah, you you were all like naughty boys. Naughty, naughty boys. We had a fucking good time, put yeah. it that way. <laughs> they tried to break the fucking crew up and I was like, <laughs> and I didn't even tell the guys that, that, that were on the chopping board. I just walked. So no, nah, you, you know. So I, you know, and then I just I said I'll wear this. I'm big. I'm a big boy. I don't give a fuck what they say. And then I, I did cop all that sort of shit. It must be a peculiar experience having like the 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 corporate element of a club coming to you and start trying to like Game of Thrones in yeah, fucking man. people out of it. And that's what I figured out. And how real, old were you? Been I was 27. Been, yeah, but I figured that shit out real quick and real early. And I was just like, you know what? It's fucking, this is a business, man. Mm. And this is in 2000s when everyone was still crying, throwing that loyalty card out. And yeah. like, no, where's loyalty? There's no fucking loyalty. I figured that shit out really early. And I was like, I said, a lot of my mates fucking get nasty and not being at training the next year. And you know what I mean? Like, so I was like, I was in a power position. I was just fucking, I said, I'm done. Now I went, and went to the Roosters and then I wasn't fucking, you know, they signed Brian Smith there. And I'm like, well, fuck that. I don't want to argue with him all fucking year. I'll go to North Queensland. <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? So I just like I just left clubs. So once you leave that one club, you don't give a shit, man. Yeah. You just out there. You just want to look after yourself. Yep. You don't give a fuck. You know, just play your best football for every club. There's every, every club that I played for. I played my best. It yep. wasn't like I was sitting there just on big money and just fucking relaxed a little bit. No, it's mm. funny. You'd be like you had you became a journeyman in the sense that you were bouncing around clubs. But yeah. You were st- like often the trajectory of a journeyman is like they just sort of. Yeah. They're just sort of eking out the remainder yeah. of the remaining no, days. And of their I was career. still fucking at still the sort of peak. You know what I mean? Thing. Still doing it at like yeah. in my thirties. So I was just like the game was just fucking fun to me. Yeah. It was really fun. I had one year at Manly, it was really fun. But then it started getting it started getting like, you know, like the Mondays were like, fuck, I don't really want to go train them. And I, that's when and, and like, I'm thirty five, you know, so I'm playing been playing some night from nineteen to thirty five. Mm. But in between that, sorry, i when I went to North Queensland, I had an opportunity to stay in North Queensland or Go to Hull. I already explained the whole thing. They fucked that whole thing up. Anyway, so I sat in the Hull, <laughs> sat in the south of France for 18 months, playing for too long. Played one game, played for the Bar Bars. You said this, I saw it on yeah. levels yeah, the other yeah, day yeah. where you were like, your first two games first are First two games, yeah. Yeah, it was madness. Fucking Bar Bars. Yeah. And, and that's where um, you got your taste for Rosa. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to scale that bottle tonight before I get the origin. <laughs> um, uh, no, so I had a, I had a great – I had a great time over there. Met some beautiful people, some great people. Living in the south of France, getting paid a shitload of money. You know, the lifestyle is unbelievable. Mm. The union's got it made, mate. We play a couple of tests with fucking New Zealand or Australia. Straight to fucking south of France, I'd go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 45 kilometres from Saint-Tropez. Yeah. St. Tropez, it's the best fucking place in the world. 45 kilometers from my house. <laughs> Cannes, Nice, yeah, fucking, yeah, oh, yeah, Monaco, yeah. all that sort of shit. Monaco Grand Prix. And then I, I think uh, a few, uh, oh, so I'm 30, 30. But at that time, 30 was fucking old in the NRL, right? Mm. So I think a few coaches heard that I wasn't, you know, I only played one or two games for too long because I signed with um, a coach who loved the league place. He was signed to Sonny Bill and all that kind of stuff. Next minute they signed this. He goes and coaches the, Fr- uh, the French side, Philippe Saint-André's name. was well, a great guy. And then the new coach was uh, a guy who's been on the board and he's been hell against Australian rugby league players come and taking French people's spots. Uh-huh. Who the fuck is doing that at the moment? Me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say one fucking word to me. Oh, really? Not one. The coach. The not coach. One not one word. Not even shake my hand or anything. Just like, because he was, he was like, I'm the fucking person that yeah. he doesn't like. Like, you know, he's been mm. fighting against that. I didn't know that until they fucking a couple of boys said, yeah, man, you're done. <laughs> he, 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 he's the one who's been advocating for fucking getting uh, rugby league players, not union, not fucking anything else, rugby league players coming over, taking French guys' spots because there was a few doing that at the time. Mm. I'm like, fuck, and how's your luck? <laughs> so I played one or two games and I was just like... How does that work li- from a contract perspective? Or were you I like- still getting paid. Oh, they were just like... You just don't get played. They just don't get played. I was over there to play, but, but what it did was like rejuvenate my body. I wasn't copping any hits or anything yeah, like that. Right. So I played eight or nine years in, in the rep scene, you know, plus, yeah. you know, 200, 200 plus games and all this sort of shit. So it takes its toll, right? I had 18 months of not getting hit. 
nothing. And then Wayne Bennett rings up and goes, I heard you're not happy, big boy. And I'm like, fuck, how do you fucking know? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what do you the know? Whisper, how, the whisper. Yeah, how around. did he fucking know? I'm sitting in the South of France where no one knew. <laughs> I must have told my fucking uh, manager and manager must have fucking done some Starts few phone calls it, yeah. and shit. And he goes, well, that's when he started. He coached Newcastle in 2012. That's right. He goes, I need some swag in this team, big boy. I need, I need, <laughs> I need, you, I need you back. Would you come back? And I'm like, ah, oh, man. Sitting on the French Riviera. Smoking darts, <laughs> drinking rosé, <laughs> yeah. nice okay. life, beautiful life. I'm like, and I thought in my head, I'm like, I could sit here for another three years and I'll retire, and I, you know, I've invested well, it'll be all right. And I'm like, and I started watching. I watched an Origin game. I'm like, yeah, fuck, it don't look that hard. Does it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, you know, the NRL didn't, look, you know, look like it. it same shit. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, then he goes, come back. He goes, give me six weeks, but he goes, don't can't can't come back straight in. He goes, let me do my thing. Come back. Train my ass off for six weeks. Bang, he's playing by round seven. Unbelievable. And then play another five years. And how'd you find it when you got back? It was great. Yeah. Yeah, nothing changed. The nah. game was like, I think I probably, probably turned into a better all-round player. Because back in the 2000s, it wasn't defensive orientated, right? Mm. It was just fucking running the ball. And you weren't getting coached like, we, like you coach these young kids. So defensive orientated. If you're not like a fucking great defender, you're not on the team. Mm. Back then, like you could just get away with like hitting couple of big hits. Like Sonny Bill just say, he, like, he's a 60% effective tackler. But <laughs> I'd rather him in the team yes. than fucking some bloke who's 100% like, because it's the impact that he makes. Right? So we just, we, we just used to try and bash the shit out of everyone. Yeah. Biggest hits, I don't give a fuck if you get up real quick. It's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, no. you know that you try, you, try and, you try and impose your will on these guys, yeah. you know? Like, um, so you didn't, didn't really change that much. And it was just, I probably turned into like a more all-rounded sort of... Um, player yeah. defensively in attack wise did you become more of, of a mentor as well yeah i remember yeah. reading at the time that you sort of wayne had wanted to, to sort of mentor the boys yeah he was you'd, you'd almost like chaperone them when they were yeah of course like wayne which because wayne trust me he was like in um because he didn't believe all the shit like because at that time during the 2000s they were like fucking i was public enemy number one yeah anything they said was like it was a gospel to everyone so like the whole narrative was whatever they said in the telegraph like Everyone would believe. Mm. He never believed that. He was my uh, national coach for two or three years. So we went on kangaroo tours for 12 weeks and we got to know each other and he trusted me and he knows what I was like. Can, totally different from whatever is portrayed, right? But mm. perception is reality to a lot of people. Because you see a lot of people now, they're going, oh, I thought you were the biggest fuck in the world. You hear a lot of comments. Mm. Oh, you're a good guy. And I'm like, it's sort of backhanded compliment, but I'm like, fucking, <laughs> thanks, mate. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I thought you were the biggest fuck we'd ever met. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. but yeah, you're not a bad bloke. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, mate. Thanks, yeah. I guess. Thanks, fuckwit. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like dealing with that when you're young and you're getting I didn't in the care, media? mate. You didn't care? I didn't. I honestly didn't. I cared about my family. Um, all, I've always put things in perspective, man. I went, As I said, I buried my dad when I was 17, so yeah. it's not that much going to fuck with me as, as a man. You know what I mean? Even now, you're not really going to fucking do anything that that's bad to me, like, unless you fucking kill someone in my family. Yes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you go through death at a young age, it changes your perspective on life and everything like that. And, like, football is just fun and you meet good people and it's just footy. Mm. Like, you're not, you know, as I said, I buried my dad when I was 17, so I'm like, life can't throw fucking that much more at a man, you know yeah. what I mean? And I was like, I always looked at it like that. So anything that they said, I was like, Cares and did you I'm ever like, have who any? Cares? I was more worried about like what mum was like thinking, you know, like because yeah. mum's mum, you know, like yeah. and my sisters and everything like that. I'm like fuck, you know. I was more worried about that than me. I'm like because I really did not give a shit. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I was like because you couldn't. One thing they couldn't fuck with me was like the football. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like because I was because I was always still, fucking runs on play, the board. still playing at a high level all the time, still doing what I wanted to do off the field, and then like it was just. That was it. They just tried to like sort of come at me like, oh, really? Most of the scene leaving a fucking nightclub at six. Who cares? Yeah. But like, but there would have been like ten or fifteen other players with me. Yeah. But that you were you were a headline. But I was rather. that dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you know, and and I just everyone just sort of nelly mate making jokes of it really, because they thought it was just, you're just taking the piss really. You just yeah. you just when when's it gonna end? Mm. Like everyone just thought fucking hell, mate. You're not getting to him. Yeah. You're not. You're not, not, not like most of the guys that I play. They're like mate. You don't understand what this guy's because they never knew what I was like when I was younger, what I, what I went through as a young kid. You know, like you know, they're like, you're never going to break this guy. Mm. Fucking like, you can't, you can't. Yeah, it's sport. This is what he's good at. Punters and dribblers, we are brought to you as always by our good friends at Neds. We're brought to you by Neds. <laughs> We're brought to you by Neds. If you hey, 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 hey,
Today we're brought to you by Ned. Now, that's obviously... You've heard this one way later in the podcast. Obviously, we, we're, we're referencing back to when we were singing at the start of the show. Uh, but we are brought to you by Ned's. And also, if you're hearing this in just a previous podcast, this has got... No context. Although, technically, it will because the bloke one will have been playing as well. Correct. Dynamic insertion. Shout out to it. Um, we are brought to you by Ned's, the number one betting platform in town. Big supporters of us here at Halo Sport. Uh, look, I don't want to let you in on any secrets as to how About Even went. About Even, if you're not aware, Punters and Noodles is our betting show, the number one betting show in town. I don't think anyone got a single bet. No, no one did. But some people went worse than others. Yes. People that triple staked a lot of things oh, went poorly. Oh, did Daddy do that? Sebo triple staked two things. Did he? Yeah. Sucked in. Um, Ned's. Neds, Neds, Neds. Uh, if you go to the Neds app and there is a group tab there, you're going to be able to join our private Neds group. Obviously, Neds has all the mod cons and all the things that you'd want to be doing from a betting perspective. But there is a, there's an about even uh, group in there where Eddie, myself, Sebo, Rando, Tobler are in there and a shitload of other dribblers. And we can all share bets, copy bets at our secret passcode for that, Ed. Dribbler. No S. That's Dribbler. It. Dribbler. See in there. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. So were you part of the team that lost all the fucking points? Yeah. So was that 2001? Two. 2002, then you guys won it. 2004. 04. Yeah, What's so we, that like? That must yeah, have been, that was that must crazy, have been man. fucked. Where you're just going like, oh so my yeah, God. Because we had it like, you, you go through that team and it was like, it wasn't a star-studded team, but it was a Full of fucking OGs and like young talent. Like yeah. I was coming through, Braith was coming through, Matt Utah was coming through. Um, you know, Brent Sherwin was Jeff still Willie? reasonably young. Who's that? Was it Will Tonga there? No, nah, you had there, Nigel yeah? Vungan and you had Willie oh, Talao. Yeah, right. Shit. Has him. Okay. You had like um like Pricey, O'Mealy, myself, Steve Reardon, Glenn Hughes, Darren Smith, real fucking old school dudes, but with yeah. a mix of like fuck like Paul Rahihi, all these guys, Rahihi. big Ra. Um, but we were just defensive fucking based. Just like I think we defended like eight sets of six one time. Jesus Christ! I was like, and we'll fit, and it was just based. That's what Bulldogs Tough. football is based on: just defense, just defense, 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 and then fucking breaking their will and then going down and scoring a try. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was just we just had a really well balanced side. We won seventeen games in a row. You'd yeah. be wrapped if you won two and two or three in this day. And age, yeah, you? I know. Seven eight. Seventeen's <laughs> Seven outrageous. Eight. And then Seven you get, then and then what? They find out you fucking. So fucking six games before the end of the year. See, I think we're on forty four points, and we still had like six games ago. <laughs> how clear? How clear of second? Oh, we're clear. Like fucking forty four points. Is eight. So many. Oh Jesus. Oh, forty four points is a shitload. Yeah, by the huge. end of the season, Dogs had won twenty games. The Warriors came first, and they won seventeen. <laughs> 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 and best attack by about 30 points yeah and we fucking give up like just say the back end we were just like who gives a shit i was yeah. just like let's just fucking not play yeah right well, so how did that how did they break out? that too yeah. yeah well we i remember we were um we just played para and we pumped them <laughs> of course um and then we're at the canterbury swimming pool uh doing the um our rehab and all that sort of shit and it was fucking more than like um you know, when you see the, you don't see the sports people, you see the TV guys. Yeah, That's when right. you know you're in shit. <laughs> yeah, right. When okay. you say the always, yeah, when you start, when you stop right. making sport pages and you start making the news, that's yeah. when you're in oh, shit. Fuck, that's that's what Wayne always journalist. said. He goes, when you start making front pages instead of back, you fucked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we were fucking front and back, and it was like, uh, and we did, we didn't know. We honestly didn't know. Yeah, don't care when you where your As money's if you coming would. from, yeah. man. Like, yeah, like we didn't know until they fucking put out like. Uh, like what everyone was on. I was like, oh, shit. Because no one really talks about no how one, much yeah, of that. No yeah. One, yeah, like you sort of hear rumours, oh, yeah, he signed for like, you know, the highest pay would have been like 400 back then. That was yeah. massive. Yeah. 400, 450, 500 maybe. That would be like huge contract then. Because the fucking salary cap was only 3.2. 3. Mm. Oh, right, isn't that crazy? Yeah, I think we were like 2 million over. <laughs> Whoops. But it was all back pay. I think it was something like re something ridiculous, you know, because all these guys they 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 bought it out in the pay in the papers like what what everyone was on. Mm. Then I was like, because we had grounds to leave, and then I was like, well, well, I just started playing for Australia and stuff like that, and I'm like, he doesn't play for Australia, so I want more than him. 
So I got a pay rise, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm walking. <laughs> so you're gonna pay more. You're gonna so pay everyone pay, more. They had to pay over. me more. They had to pay me more. <laughs> yeah, they did. I was just like, uh, yeah. Well, uh, see that guy you. there hasn't played for Australia, and I want more than him. Yeah, yeah. wow. And they're like, Cause, okay, cause okay, all okay. Because all the amounts came out. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So like guys that were playing like Braith and myself, and like well, the young kids were only 21, and I, like, no, I want. Yeah, want I need that. some of that. Thank yeah. you very much. And we got pay rise. Fuck was everyone yeah, ropeable? When were you, you pissed off? Oh, we're like, just pissed off at the fucking at administration, really. Yeah. Like, how did you let this slip? You know, like, and I know why. It was just greed. And it was like, I think that Con Constantinides, whatever his name is, a Greek guy, developer. So they let him in. They, they, they were trying Great to build developers. that big, that oasis, that oasis thing out in Liverpool. Mm. So this was happening about the fucking 99, 2000. They were trying to build, they were trying to move this out there, right? Mm. They were building it. So I'm paraphrasing here, and this is all allegedly shit, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah but not really. Um, <laughs> so they had this guy put in tens of tens of million, tens of millions into this um, development, right? He had all the documents on um, on what players were on, right? So usually the Bulldogs keep that shit tight. Never let any outsiders in. They've let this guy in. He brought down a, he brought down a fucking um, a prime minister. Oh guy. really? Yeah. So you think he's going to bring yeah. us down? Fucking hell. Um, so he had all the, he had all the, the contracts and everything like that. So they've tried to fuck him off, get his money. They try to like screw him over. And he's like, uh-uh. Uh, okay. If you don't pay X, whatever, this is going to whatever. Obviously they fucking pissed him off to that, that far where he just gone bang. All blew up. All blew Who up. tells you, like, do you find out you're just in shit in the papers and then it's like a couple of weeks before the NRL takes points away and all that? Yeah, it was yeah, it was nearly pretty much straight away with that. Yeah, right. Because it was fucking It was all there. So yeah. brazen. He had it, yeah, it was just like, <laughs> okay, well, uh, this is what everyone's on the next day. Yeah, right. Because yeah, usually coming up we're going, Oh, you got you got your points um they're threatening to take your points off you, all this sort of shit. I said, What for? Like we, we didn't know. We just fucking we were hung over as fuck too. Like yeah, we just come right. up to rehab, everyone's just like, Fucking what what are you talking about? A bit rattled and I was like, Oh, this this will blow over, who cares? And then fucking it didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> was it hard to get, like, come back the next year and then obviously the year after when you Oh, won? yeah, but it was, like, sort of dro it drove us. That's mm. what folks sort of folks in. We had a really good playing group, man. We had um, some good leaders in some good positions and, like, a good coach. Like, fo you know, like, folks, he was just a real fucking siege mentality. That's what he had. Mm. Fuck everyone else. We're going to we'll do it our way. You know what I mean? Like, and we had him, and it, we we didn't have like like now you got like fucking fifty coaches, mm. where you just had that one guy that you listen to, and he was right, like, so and yeah. he was like the guy, like you know, he was one of the toughest blokes, dogs of war, all that sort of shit, like uh, you know, like Hall of Famer player, all that kind of stuff. Did and he coin that phrase, dogs of war, or was that a media thing? No, I think it was it was the. We got anointed with the dogs of war because as a Ford pack, you always wanted that, but you don't call yourself that. You <laughs> no. know what I mean? You feel like a <laughs> fuck with. Yeah. You know, like Peter Kelly and all these guys, you know, they come out and said, yeah, they're, you know, they're the dogs of war. They're the new dogs of war because in the 80s, that was, when that was, was the was shit. Like Gillespie, fucking Peter Kelly, Tunks, all these blokes just used to really just fucking kill people. Mm. And folks, he was a really f integral part of that. Mm. And, you know, to be anointed with that meant a heap. To, to a to a player, mm. um, so yeah, you get an, you get anointed with that. You don't come out you and go, yeah, where the dogs are. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll come at you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, I used to we used to muck around. I used to muck around with folks. I said, oh, "Fucking," because you used to go, oh, "I'd fucking love to play you." I said, "I would run over you easily, <laughs> folks." I said, "Folks, how heavy were you in your day?" Oh, about 89 kilos. So I'm 100 fucking 18 kilos. <laughs> I can move like a fucking back. I'll run straight over you. Oh, guys, I'll fucking lower and just fucking crack your ribs. I said, I'll break your shoulder. <laughs> you, and your fiberglass, you and your fiberglass shoulder pads. <laughs> he was good, buddy. Because we used to stir it. Because like, like, he was like part of the 80s and then we were like that 2000 group. Yeah. You know, like, I said, hey, body shapes. Fuck it. He's going to stop fucking ogre. Yeah, Sonny right. Bill. Me. Fucking pricey, Roy Asatasi. I said, please, come on, folks, you be real. <laughs> it was a hectic side you had. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a we had a good side, side man. That 2004 team, like, yeah. you go back. Oh, it's a nice it, side. It's a fucking side. So it's just a well balanced side, right? Yeah. You know, like, you, you had guys like Sonny and Rennie and that on the bench. You had guys like Tony Grimaldi and Corey Hughes starting because th that's how it balanced out. Yes. You know, you can't have, like, a bunch of superstars in the pack. 
even someone like Luke Patton, who was a great fullback. Mm. He was your fullback, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, years, but he, he never played rep footy, though, did he? But he was no. someone who was, like, always, uh, you know, like, I mean, you could always say, like, Dylan Edwards in the sense of oh, someone I was about to say like, that. He's a Dylan Edwards. You know, it was played really great good, system. really well-respected, but yep. just, like, didn't so go always be in, He'd be always be in the leadership groups. So he'd always be highly respected, but there would be no rep games. Yeah. You know, because he played in, a, in an era, you know, you had Minnie, you had Carmichael Hunt, you had all these all these great players ahead of him. Lockie was – Lockie only just give his fullback spot up in 2004. Mm. Um, but general, yeah, you wouldn't swap him for many fucking players because yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he goes at it. He was good. And he's a good leader, very vocal, um, and he leads by example. Like, he fucking scored like 130 tries and like he's very underrated. Yeah. Mm. Fucking, he was a skinny little – Fucking thing, Nothing that much yeah, but doing. strong as hell. Yeah, you know, he's one of those blokes that train like you'd hit him and like you know you get a corked arm because his fucking elbow would hit you. <laughs> Fuck, general, go away. <laughs> you know, but he's um yeah he was he was a good dude. We had a, we had a great time there. We had we had that was just a, a moment in time where life wasn't that serious. Yep, and it was all about footy. It was all about footy, man, and having a good time and hanging out with each other and just fucking loving each other. We couldn't get enough of each other. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing for lunch? Oh, what are we doing for dinner? It would be like 10 or 12 of us. And just say like little things like, well, folks, he was like, because folks, he was a fucking professional as hell. Didn't drink that much and all that sort of shit. There was a big drinking culture back then. Mm. It was. Not now. It's not like that anymore. Um, so folks, she goes, oh, I'll just say, yeah, played on Sunday. We've got a Friday game. No drinking. Like, well, you, you're only going to delay, delay it. So you might as well let us drink tonight <laughs> because cause we'll train tomorrow and then – we're not going to train on Tuesday, so we're going to drink Monday. <laughs> you that, might as well let's get it out it. of our system. I, just, I told you, I said, you, you might as well let us drink tonight because if you don't, we're going to drink Monday. And then you're going to delay the fucking, the, the recovery. He goes, oh, fucking hell, you fucking guys are fucked. And I'm talking like 13 fucking 14 starters. You ain't talking, you ain't talking a breakaway crew who's yeah. just like a bunch of alcoholics. No, you're talking just, we just love hanging out with each yeah. other. We'd say whatever fucking time and this and this and then we go bang. Where would you go? It would go? be like 12 or 13. Oh, oh, depends, like just say on the Sunday, it would be like, we'd go to, Cunt, we'd go to um, what was it, Fusion, Northies, because like, a lot of us lived out in Cronulla Way. Yeah. Um, or we'd go back to the Leagues Club. And then just fucking sink from there and then just make bad decisions from there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? All right, let's go to the cross. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. You know, go to Sapphire, go to Sapphire and stuff like that. And what time's medical? And like, you know, you get, you know, you just, that was it. Like, you yeah. walk, and the Empire was open until fucking what, 12 o'clock? Yeah, you know, I remember getting Ogre to come pick us up like about eight o'clock with all our training gear and we were still sitting in there and then he'd come drive us to training and like, just get in there. Fucking do your swimming and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. Oh, God. Just train the next day. Yeah. Because like, it was like, it was just the whole like, it was just like drink hard, play hard, train hard, all that sort of shit. So, you know, the guys that, you know, if you had a little bit of a breakaway crew, just say it'd be eight or nine of them, or nine of, of us, I mean, um, you'd drink and then like you'd be the best trainer at the fucking, if it was fitness or whatever it was, because you always used to do fitness all the time. you just do it. Like, if you drunk piss and you were the worst trainer, you weren't allowed to drink. Yeah. You'd have to win everything. Everything. So, like, and then, like, be the best player on the weekend. So, there was real, there was fucking, like, it wasn't like you're just doing it for fun. We just loved each other's company, but there was repercussions. Mm. And you had to face, like, leadership groups and shit like that. And if you weren't doing the right thing, you get dropped. Is the game too professional now to for that sort of behaviour? Yeah. Like, I know that no one does it, yeah, but, but could they, you do it? But could just uh, you couldn't do it in public. Yeah. Because, you know, they just Everyone's go. Everyone's taking photos. It's a, and it's a Monday and you're down at, like, the Sylvania Hotel <laughs> in the Arvo. Fully. Just having a – got your Fully. fucking 14 players there. The only people that didn't just turn up was probably Pricey and fucking Hasm. Mm. Everyone else is turning up. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's fucking. Mate, imagine seeing that now, yeah. like a full all fucking like boy. And like we're down we're down. you know a top side. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're fucking top four all the time, and we just got fucking. Yeah, you, know, you got the fucking pretty much the biggest stars in the game at that time. We were just sitting at Sylvania Pub or whatever pub we're talking about, Carmen's or something like that at Cronulla. We'd fucking go over to Manly sometimes. We're fucking just anywhere, just bouncing around all over the place. As long as we're together. Yeah. What you was know? the grand final like yeah, that night? It was mental, mate. Like just, I mean, obviously you got the Clive Churchill. Fuck, it was, like, mate, we went for a week. That was the only time that I was just like, we had, oh, this is how fucking, how crazy it was. I remember we all got picked in the Australian team. And I was like, fuck, I don't even want to go on to it. <laughs> I just want to stay here and just like Party. lap it all up. Because yeah. we only got a week. We only got a week and yep. then we had to go, it was beautiful, you know, beautiful time of the year. Fucking October and that. Oh, good. Like Bondi's going off and the eastern suburbs, Manly, fucking everywhere's going off. And we're like, Fuck, straight into camp, getting flogged. 
Yeah, you're the kings of the world. And then oh, you go back yeah, that's to a bloody... real humbler. Oh, it's a big humble. Billy Johnson, the infamous Billy Johnson, he was a fucking trainer. So we rock up. So we've had like, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in camp on Sunday. Fitness. Straight into it. And the amount of fitness you can lose in one week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the best Oh, lose my all. God. We're training at Cogger. The grass was that thick. It was 32 <laughs> degrees. We'd do all Malcolm's and like Billy fucking, he just was in because he always because he was my trainer when he was at the dogs in like 98 99 then he fucked off up to north queensland he was the australian trainer queensland trainer all that kind of stuff and he's always hard he's always and he's fucking i said you're a fucking asshole <laughs> i said seriously why are we, we you know we're at least we should have sat out of that one yeah you know, yeah fucking come sitting on out of anything <laughs> fucking bang bang just fucking slammed us willie tong the first time oh really Tong willie tong was a gun trainer and it was his first fucking um First kangaroo tour, right? Mm. And he fucking dropped out. Did he? And like, no one ever does that. And this is how bad he was hurting. Because he never used to drink, right? And his body just gave up on him. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's just not, it's like his body quit. He didn't quit. His he just body couldn't move. just couldn't do it. And then like, like double cramps, hamstring cramps, like fucking <laughs> heart cramps. Fucking <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. His body's like, I said, don't you dare fucking drop out, you prick. <laughs> Ever. Like, you know what I mean? That was yeah. just part of our fucking DNA. Yeah. Never. He goes, I can't move. <laughs> and like... <laughs> That's so good. I was like, get up. That's fucking oh, hilarious. Fuck. What was the game experience like in the grand final? Yeah, that was mad. It was just, I mean, it was different because of... Obviously, we went through that shit at 2002, mm -hmm. 2003, the Coffs Harbour bullshit. It was a lot of fucking... A lot of shit going on. And... um Playing against the Roosters team, who could, who could have easily beat us, mm. easily. That game went down to the wire, so evenly matched, very yeah. evenly matched teams. Um, everyone was nervous as fuck. You know what I mean? Like it was just like you know, I've played in Origins and Tests and that before that, but it was like it's just a different fucking different. It's different. Yeah, you know what I mean? You go to war with your mates. You know, it's very emotional. It's um, you know, that's our mentality. We, we were going to war. That's all forwards, backs, everything. That was that was that was our ethos, and um. You just don't. You're scared of the unknown, right? It's like fuck. If we get beat, man. Like it's gonna be mm. devastating. Yeah, this is gonna be devastating. You know what I mean? Like you, you lose a game, it's devastating. Let alone fucking losing a grand final. Let it come down to that fucking last fucking play from Bobcat. Mick Crocker gets oh, through. He passed. Right. Mick Crocker yeah, gets through. Yeah, he yeah, passed yeah. to Chris Walker. Chris Walker scores in the corner. It's fucking seventeen. We've been 17, 16 or something like that. And he's got, he forced a knock on, didn't he? Is that what he yeah. did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a 16, 13. 16, 13. So if they scored, it would be 17. So 16, just say if they, yeah, yeah, they would have won regardless of like yeah. the goal or what. Yeah. So 17, 16, I'm like that one play. And it, we, you know, we're just sitting there going, fuck. So when it was all over, it was just more relief. fucking relief. And it's like, we could have sat here just being easily being like fucking losers. And most of those Rooster boys are fucking some of my really close mates. And just yeah. watching them just be fucking crying and fucking, you know, it means so much to yeah. win a grand final. That's what I mean. Like, winning Origins is fucking great. You know what I mean? Test football, great. You know, like, grand final, different level. Just that little bit different. A bit more emotional because we're going to war. We're going to train every day. Yeah. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. You know, we fucking we're together every day. We eat lunch. We're in the piss all the time. We're doing things, you know, all the time. We're doing everything together, and then it all comes together. And it's just like fuck. That's why you see people just lose their shit, man. Like start crying, and it's like fucking bang. Yeah, it's like it's a different thing. You don't see blokes really, really crying after an origin. You do. It depends. It depends sometimes. Maybe after fucking if eight straight, you do from a New South Wales side. Yeah. But other than that, like yeah, but like, even really like you know, that. you see like Queensland, they go through. It's like they're fucking. They're just a bit cocky, a bit bit. Bit smug when they were yeah. winning, but like there's been some. Yeah, you, know, you probably see when you know Benny Elias when he won and Steve Mortimer. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Know, I think that's probably the only two that's really showed real you can, mo emotion. I think, yeah. like, I was pumped. I remember Sean Timmons kicked that goal. Brett Finch kicked that field goal. I was in both those games. Yeah. That was mad. Mm. Yeah, I didn't feel like crying. No, no. you were just. I happy. was like, fuck yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, you know what I mean? Like, no way. Like, you're, you're winning a fucking – in Golden Point. Yeah. Like, regardless, you win a Golden Point game on a, on a Saturday, uh, Saturday night in Brookvale. Yes. Or Saturday night at Campbelltown. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Let alone that moment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. You this just, is sick. It's just it's, – it's, it's another level, right? You know, but, you know, the grand final, and it depends how you win that grand final. Like, just say Manly when they pump Melbourne 40 nil, you're like, fuck, you wouldn't mind a bit of a – Bit of a game, ah, fuck but him, but That'd but if you're manly, fuck them, mate. Fuck them. Did you go for game two? Nah, no. we did the stream. 
Yeah, yeah right. So man, go yeah. to up there. Make sure we we'll fucking do something next year. Yeah. We should collab up there. Yeah, we'll do for with sure. that blue ivy and just sit around, mate. It's pumps from like two o'clock. The whole fucking street, these yeah, young, they're right. fucking raging. That's the thing I still haven't done in, from a rugby league like experience. You haven't been to Suncorp? Nah, not and for then, a, So we'll origin. sit there and we'll just drink piss all day. We'll do our own thing. Because we just we just try to set up a few things this year, so like the next five years will be fucking Starts big. Rolling, yeah, mm. and so people turned up to this party, and then next year we'll start doing more, and then fucking the whole fucking joint was packed. And then I had to do the Gambaro thing, which is all ex like Croc and myself and um, Gordy and Wendell and fucking heaps of like New South Wales and Queensland play. Do the talk off. It's about five different rooms. Mm. And are you bouncing from room, yeah, room, yeah, room, yeah, room to room? That's and a then, sick little like, yeah, uh, it's mad. And then like people are paying a shitload of money, yeah. Like, fucking, they're all sitting down. They're all fucking just sitting there on every word you fucking say. So I mean, Wendell will be doing one room, and I mean Croc, yeah. And then um, then you walk down with everyone. Oh, you walk right, down to the yeah. ground, and that's when it's fucking wild as fucking. So everyone's <laughs> full of piss as well. Like, was it wasn't just not like just them. I've been drinking since twelve o'clock. Yeah, as well. yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. Go fuck yourself. See, that's the thing that's like when you're up there for Magic Round, everyone's like it's festive. Everyone's no, happy. No, no. Everyone no, loves everyone's each other. Loving everyone's each other. Everyone's, as I told, origin. I'm like a bit fucking. I'm almost intimidated. I told um, I told Hoz that I said. Magic Ram was all fucking friendly. I said, you watch these cunts turn on me, fucking everything. It's <laughs> <Do they, laughs> crazy. Do they give you plenty? Oh, they do, but it's a bit of a love-hate thing now. Yeah. So it's like, so it's, it's all right. Yeah. I feel like it's generally kind of become, but not obviously you can speak to it from a yeah. player experience, but like the way it seems to be, if you look at it like videos and shit from back in the day, it's like it was really aggro hate. Whereas now oh, yeah. I feel like it seems like it's a bit more like Because of social fun. media. Because everyone's fucking friends. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, all the, even the players are all friends. Yeah. Like, it was like, there was times, times I didn't know Shane Webke. You want to fucking kill me. <laughs> Gordon Tallis, you know yeah. what I mean? You play a couple of tests and that with them, but you don't know them. Like, Queensland are sick together. It's fucking what about when you're in like the test, because like in test camp and stuff, there was, who was telling the stories? Is it even Gal where like. No, they were talking, are you talking about with. Is it with like the current, like that, the, the very dominant Queensland yeah, side? Yeah, but that's where the they test, fucked it sit. because, no, because they started singing. That fucking Queensland song That's when right. they won. That yeah, I, yeah. I, I yippee yippee yeah, fucking, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, don't. Yeah. Gal would have. Gal Birdie. So Gal Birdie. And it was, so there wasn't that many. There wasn't that many. No, we all we were all like sort of retired from rep football when it was probably about nine, ten of us. Yeah. Mm. And it was, it was pretty equal. And it was fucking really like everyone respected each other. There wasn't that. Because cunts don't like Gal. Mm. Yes, you know what I mean? They yes, don't like, they yeah. don't, they, and they don't rate him as a player and they don't rate him as a bloke. Mm. So and Birdie's just a cunt, <laughs> but he's a good cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. You love yeah. playing with Birdie, where yeah. Gal's a fucking hog, and he wasn't. He wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like you, you don't yeah. like playing with cunts. Like you love playing with Chalky, like a Chalky Watmow yeah. and fucking yep. Sammy Thiday's good to play. Nate Miles, all those blokes. But Gal, no one likes playing with Gal because he doesn't pass the ball. Because he doesn't. Because he's all Gal. about his numbers, mate. Yeah, right. Really? Where like yeah, he he dig in. He take like just say if you get to right side, just say left side post, and then. You'd want to go on a shift, he'd overcall it down to the short side so he can take like twenty meters easy. <laughs> so, it's, it's rotten. If you know the if you know the game, you're then, like that's the and yeah. guess what? You get caught on the fucking short side with a right side kicker. It's the worst position for him. So why does someone like that then get picked for all the rep sides? Because his numbers like, were just blowing cunts out of the water. Right. You know what I mean? And he because like he didn't debut till two thousand six mm. in a in um New South Wales. Mm. He didn't debut till two thousand eight. Seven, I think, for his Australian team, and he's only a year younger than me. Is he really? Yeah, but he he didn't de he debuted late because no one fucking rated him. Bit and of a late bloomer. Jeez, he played. Yeah, but his late. numbers were fucking big all the time. But mm. he sort of fooled every cunt because he's playing eighty minutes, fit as fuck. He's the toughest. He's tough as fuck. Yeah, don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, he'll fucking keep going. And he's only a little cunt, but he's fucking. He's a tough cunt. Yeah, but his skill set. When he started getting higher and higher, like he demanded more ball. Right yeah. at the start, he wasn't. That dude who was going to get he 20, couldn't, like, 20 no touches, he'd be like, he he'd be like, yeah, score, make your 40 right? tackles count and do your 15 hit ups and yeah. fuck off. Yeah. You're not doing <laughs> your, you're not doing any plagues like Jakey or yeah. you don't have that license like Cam and Yo and all that. Mm. When he was lock, right? Mm. He wasn't front row. He was lock. So that was just the fucking work and workhorse lock. Yeah. He wasn't the ball playing yeah, lock. Then he the tried ground. to ball play. You know what I mean? And the was, he any, was he a, much of a ball player? No, no. He, he would get, but he would get the shape. So ball players get their lead, get the guy at the back. And he just dummy and go himself. Yeah, right. So he, oh, I do. I see. I've sort of got, I've got that, that in my, my head mind. now. Yes. Yeah. He would just go. He would get he that shape. He wasn't fooling anyone that, that He'd demand that shape and dummy, boom, so he can get one-on-ones. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, and it's smart, right? And that's why Cam, but Cam Murray and that know when to pull the trigger. Like, there's a lot of times where Gal could pass the ball to the front guy mm. or the back guy. 
because they're all coming up. The three man would come in. As soon as you see the three man turn his shoulders in, you pass. Mm. He didn't even look at that. He wouldn't even know. He wouldn't understand any of that. Did He'd, you have any rivalry with him when you were playing? No, nah, no. Nah, we used to go hard against each other, but it was yeah. just like just fucking. It was just decent. You know yeah, what I mean? Like he yeah, was just. Yeah. I never. I just never rated him. I wouldn't look at him go, fucking Paul Gallon's playing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's not. You know that no, video of Greg Bird where he says gets asked Mal to run at him? Because Mal reckons that Oh, Mal yeah, so said it's, it's after Greg Bird, yeah, after Origin, he, Mal had basically said that he reckons that Greg Bird was staying down milking for penalties. Yeah. And and Bird's like, Oh, Mal reckons that, does he? Well, maybe Mal should fucking run at me. It's like one of the greatest videos doing <laughs> He's the, the rounds. best, mate. Birdie is the But you could see his eyes, like you get an interview and he's sort of like friendly with this reporter and he's like you just see this thing switching his eyes, like, oh, that's where like he goes psycho. And he's like, yeah, no, no, no. I said that, did he? <laughs> did you see? You see some of his moments in? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when he need Shane Martini in the fucking he, he head. He had it in him, didn't he? <laughs> Back to just quickly to Origin, because you're saying like you, like, I mean, and we can remove it if you don't want to mention on here that you thought yeah. they were going to lose. But like, what did you see or what did you feel in the early pre like pre game I, one? I felt. I talked to some players that are current players, right? And just the feeling that they had in, 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 in camp, it just was a real disconnect, right? right. That's the word, disconnect. Yeah. And, and the whole thing about origin is connection, right? Disconnect like between the playing group? Playing group and yeah. coaching group. Right. Yeah. And not from each other necessarily? Not from each other, but they just said, you know, like, I don't know, I think game two was like a, a dry camp. Yep. You know, like no, yeah. no, you, know you tell grown-ass men what to do just makes you rebel right mm -hmm. hey willie you can't drink i can because <laughs> yeah do you know what i mean like, i'm just no, that, that's my yes. that's that's everybody's natural sort of feeling you're like you, unless you're a submissive little fucker and you just mm. go okay yes sir yes sir no sir but yeah. like you pick 17 blokes and you tell everybody not to drink there's going to be about three or four going Fuck you. I'm almost Especially gonna do origin it just you I'm gonna do it because to. you told me what to do. Yeah. Because everyone rebels at that age and everyone's alpha males and all that kind of shit in camp and you're like you're not you're not a bunch of sixteen year old kids where you can get told what to do. Under sixteens New South Wales, you're not allowed to drink. Of course you shouldn't be drinking anyway. Or even under eighteens, no drinking. Okay, I won't drink. First grade, NRL, these mm. guys have been doing what they want and they can perform at a high level yeah. for a long time. So it's like when I heard that, I was like, Oh, that doesn't rub doesn't rub the players the right it's also, way. There's an element of origin. It seems that, like there's a bit of bonding. Drinking First thing that I heard was anyway. it wasn't fun. And yeah. origin, all the origin camps I've been involved in, it was fucking the funnest thing I've ever done. Right. Everything was fun mm. from walking into camp, having a great time. The coach, fucking all the players, you've seen everyone like Gaz and Minnie and fucking Fitzy, Ogre, yeah. Bobcat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Joey, Freddie. Mm. Coops, fucking, it was just like a really fucking tight gang, man. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and everyone was best mates. It was, it was, and I think New South Wales, we built that. Like, hey, like, we won three, in a, we won three. Yeah. And that was like, I thought, fuck, this, you know, everyone started throwing up Dynasty, yeah. right? And yeah. I thought, maybe. yeah, maybe, but like, then we've lost what? Th so we're three and three, right? In the last six years. Yeah, three and three, that's right. We could easily be like, we could easily be fucking six and zero. Well, it should be six and zero. Really, we could be. I yeah. mean, we should be by the plays because I always look back when I was playing Origin, fucking played against possibly one of the greatest fucking rugby league sides ever, mm. like a prime GI Billy Slater, Cam Smith, Cooper Cronk, JT, Sam Thiday, Cam Smith. I say Cam Smith. Yeah, Cooper. was Lockyer in there? Yeah, Lockie, like prime Lockie. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm like ridiculous. Israel Falau. Gee, I was like, yeah, it was okay, like a, it's okay, a rugby and we still side. went to decide us all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, a couple of those games, like, fuck, that was the most shattering games I've played in. Mm. You know, because we lost to those fucking, you know, we're going down to the wire. And um, I'm like, yeah. And then you look back in the in history of the game, you're like, fuck, yeah, they're, they're, they're way better than us. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I always match still. 1 to 17. I'm like, I'll look back at like 2007 and 8, 9. I'm like, yeah, we did good just to get to game three. Mm. Yes, you know exactly. what I mean? Not to get and, and not get smoked. And just to be fucking fighting for every fucking every single minute, and it just come down to, a, to to JT brilliance or GI brilliance or Lockie. They had those players that would do some shit, and I'm like, fuck, you can't coach that, and you can't defend it, and you can't game plan for it. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to wait till they go. You just got to go. You just got to try and like, like you know, Billy Slater doing some shit, Lockie and that. Like, we just, you just had to just manage it. They're going to do some great things, but they had 
about eight players that would do great things. All yeah. the time. All the fucking time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, we contain Lockie for fucking 80 minutes. Well, gee, I went nuts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right? Okay, well, we the handled the left side. Something. We fucking had Justin Hodges going crazy on the right with Israel Folau and Hodges fucking JT. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, Willie Tong is going crazy over the left. Yeah. It's just like Israel Folau is jumping over the top of fucking everyone. You know, like their middles were like, you know, Pricey, Webke, Petro, Nate Miles, Sam Friday, Dallas Johnson. <laughs> just fucking hard motherfuckers, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, try and run in at Tony Carroll. Like, remember Brett White? Remember Brett White's first origin? Was that Brett, where he got fucking, fucking pumped? Fought? Yeah. So I said, look, I wanted to take the, um, because I, I was the other prop, I said, give me the kickoff, right? Because I know what sort of fucking energy it is with the kickoffs. Yeah. He goes, no, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, whatever, okay, whatever. <laughs> and he talked some shit too. He was saying, you know, like he, you know, he's just a young, young. He goes, yeah, oh, yeah. I can't wait to play Queensland. Of course, you're going to say that shit. It's like Bradman Best coming out. I fucking hate Queensland. Mm. They, they, they bait you. Mm. Do you like Queensland? I fucking don't like Queensland. Of course, I don't like yeah, Queensland. Yeah. I'm in New South Wales, watching New South Wales and Queensland. Of course, I hate Queensland. So that is bulletin board material, right? Mm. So he said some shit. Took a hit up. He ran straight in fucking the worst three in the world. Fucking Petro, Tony Carroll, and Dallas Johnson. Oh, my God. It was one of the fucking most brutal hits I've ever seen. I was next to him. I was like, ooh. <laughs> and it busted his nose. And I think Tunza or some Tunza hit him straight across the nose. Petro hit him body. And, like, Dallas Johnson with just a clean cut, cut in half. Just I was cutting, just like, yeah. ooh, it's got to hurt. That's oh, just, And it was a fucking great hit. And I was just like, I told you I should have taken that first one. <laughs> so I had to yeah. take the next one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the next one's just as fucking hard. Yeah. Because they're going off that first one, you know? And, I was just and like, they're all frothing. Yeah, they yeah, because that they they just yeah, when those kickoffs, that's what I'm looking for, I looked forward to in game two, right? I was like, that's gonna that's gonna happen. Mm. It's gonna happen. Our boys are gonna come out and fucking Bit give it to them. Yeah. It just didn't happen. Didn't happen. So, so what do you reckon that's about? What do you think has changed from when Freddie started? as origin coach to where we are now, which seems to be a bit negative. Like they're not having yeah. fun camps is a dis Yeah, well, just think, yeah, it's it's the fun stuff, right? It's, it's you know, like, I think they probably feed off Freddie and his energy. Sometimes he can be off. Sometimes, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, and with the media, you know, the media's trying to pick on him. He they're trying to, they're trying to like control it. Well. They're trying to control the narrative, right? And Freddie's a good dude, man. Like he's a good dude. Like, mm. You know, but like everybody has their run. It's six years, man. It's, yeah. it's a fucking long time. Mm. You know, like we had, we had, we've still got a squad there. I mm. Fuck, I, I still think we should have won. We, we could have won last year and this year. We should have fucking won, won in Adelaide. Won. Yeah. yeah, we should have won game one. We fucked. That was setup, right for the picking. If the fix was in, yeah. if I had a fucking go on, okay, boys, um, 18, 16. 18, 16 in Origins is like being up 10. 10 minutes ago, then we send one of their players off. End at New South Wales. Yeah. No, 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 no. They'll score two more fucking tries and just f – and I'm like, oh, my God, that happened. Yeah. And I'm like – and then I just thought automatically, game two, fuck, Suncorp, yeah. fuck. Big trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> yeah. Big Huge trouble. trouble. It's going to be a monumental fucking mon – like – It should be a decider tonight. This has obviously come out. Well, yeah. since we're game, recording today. It should be. Yeah. Should be a we should be game pumped. Three. Man, I'm going to the uh, tonight's game. I'm like – you know, everyone goes, there's no dead rubber. I don't, you know, what, what do you call it? Yeah. What do you call it? It's a fucking dead rubber. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you uh, see, you hear like a lot of ex-players, there's no such thing as a dead rubber. I'm like, well, what is a dead rubber? Mm. When you're fucking done 2-0. <laughs> yeah. And you, you can't, can't win I mean? a series. And you that's can't win a series. But I know, I get it, there's no dead rubbers because the intensity of the game, that's what they're more or less talking about. Yeah. The intensity of the game will still be up there because the fact that Queensland want to sweep, that's why it's hard to sweep. Queensland want to sweep us on our home ground and embarrass the fuck out of us. Mm. I know what they're like, their mentality. We're fine fucking not to get swept. So it's a battle of wills and it's a battle of everything. So that's why there's not a dead rubber as in optically looking at the game. It's yes. not going to be like, we're just going to give up and let them put 50 on us. Yep. Mm. That's, that's, that's the... No that's one the, wants to get... The, that's the fear the whole, of being swept Yeah, is what that's the whole the thing. It's the fear going. of being swept. It's yeah. like, I don't want to get swept. So you put that extra like... 10% in, which I thought you should have done that in game two. Yeah, it would have been nice if that It would have been game <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Why are we doing one. this for game yeah. three? And the last 10 minutes of game one would have been nice as well. Yeah, right? you know what I mean? Little things like that, you know, but, you know, all the ex-players, have you got to say that, you know? Yes. And they all work for the NRL and all that sort of shit and they're all part of New South Wales Rugby League and, yeah. like, oh, I, I work for those guys as well. I do a bit of work for them, but I... I know what a fucking dead rubber is. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not going to look like a dead rubber because no one throws a towel in an origin. No. And you get these young kids who's never played origin before. You get your Bradman Best. You get all these other guys who are getting a, getting a crack at origin for the first time. 
and you know it's 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 great for them. One of the things I that sort of I I guess you could say surprised me about you once I got to know you is that you're way more of an astute rugby league mind than I think just generally uh, I reckon people would give like a front row yeah. credit for. You know what I mean? And but not just in comparison to anyone, not just a front, not yeah. for a front rower. I just think you're, you know, I respect and a, and I think you have a good way of like conveying rugby league knowledge to the every yeah. man as well. Yeah. Um, is there any world where you would coach? You do some assistant work at the yeah. dogs now, but where you would coach in a more sort of senior capacity or yeah. in New South Wales? I for like example? what I, I like what I do now with the Bulldogs. I'm an ambassador for the club. And I sort of am in control, me and uh, Ogre, about the culture that we're trying to build at the club and mm. rebuild, you know, because it's, it's, there's no secret, it's, it's, it's lost. Mm. And it's going to take two or three years to get it back. Mm. And it starts from the juniors, right? 16 year old kids, 17, 18. Like, I was one of those kids come down as a 17 year old. And it's just to indoctrinate everything that a Bulldog player should be. And then by the time they get to first grade, they're ready. Yep. You know, you just add a few little things here and there, but the mentality's there, right? It's hard to put that mentality into a young kid. Mm. And um and you gotta and you gotta be um selective as well because it's it's draining. It's a very draining job because you wanna put so much energy into every kid, but the stats say and oh, fuck all people are gonna make it. Yeah. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So you gotta be very careful and you know, the people that we recruit is important. Gus is important to the club, Ciro is important to the club, everybody involved in the club wants to make it go further. But like with coaching, I understand the game quite well. Mm. You know, I love I love uh teaching young kids, NRL players, even even that and like you know, like if, if anything come up and just you know, if they changed coaching or anything like that and they said come in just come into camp and just just be around camp for New South Wales. Of course I would. Yep. Mm. You know what I mean? But like, you know, Freddie has his people there and, um, you know, he's got Danny Badiris, who's a great friend of mine. Mary's a good friend of mine. You've got Brandy. Uh, you got Freddie. You know, you've got guys like that that have been there for six years. Mm. You know, Hayden Knowles. you got all that kind of stuff. And, mate, at the end of the day, they're not getting the job done. Mm. And I know what New South Wales are like. They'll fucking, they eat their own. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel sorry for Freddie because, like, He's not in control of like calling plays, right? You know, like you, you're in control of just getting these guys ready for that game. Pumped up. They just that's and sort sometimes. Of, I guess, does I that like work more for you? Like again, I'm throwing your hat in the ring for a coach in fucking New South Wales, but yeah. like you know, where you're uh, to, to your point of it not being you're not calling plays, but there is a lot of it which is about like man motivation, yeah. getting them like. W is it, would you ever consider that if someone was like Willie, would you coach New South Wales? Yeah, I would. I'd love to. Like yeah. it was just, it's just, it's something that. Like me being coached by some of the best coaches, like with with Phil Gould, uh, Wayne Bennett, Craig Bellamy, um, Steve Folks. Like everyone had their different little ways of coaching. Like Folks was real hard, hard on me. Like just like just with discipline, with everything like that, hard work, all that kind of stuff. Bell, uh, Bellamy was really intense but really detailed. Wayne Bennett was all about man management. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's just like managing your egos. Not I can't coach you the way I coach you. Understand mm. that. And right now that is really important because of the ethnicities in this game right now. Sixty percent Polynesian. You know what I mean? Those um the minority now is is Australian, mm. right? You know, indigenous, all that kind of stuff. So you've got to understand people and like little things like if a coach doesn't understand, just say if you're talking to a whole group and an indigenous brother is like he's looking at the ground, like that's not rude, right? That's just it's rude for him to look you in the eyes. It's disrespectful, right? In 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 the indi yeah, in the yeah. indigenous culture, like yeah. just because he's looking at the ground doesn't mean he's not listening. Yeah, it's just part of the indigenous culture. They don't like looking in the eyes. Mm. It's not like that. They don't get down like that. And in the Polynesian sort of uh, culture, if you look someone in the eyes, it's like you want to fucking fight. Yeah, you know what really? I mean. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. a big difference. So when I like, don't, you know, so if they're looking around and stuff like that, this ain't mean that they're not in full. It's funny because like I've always, and I've always been raised to be like, look someone directly yes, in the eye. Yes, it's shake different. Hand, look it's, in it's the exactly. Eye. And that's the, yeah. the Australian way. That's yeah. the English way. That's how we, you know, that's that's a bit different, right? Mm. Mm. But it's different in Polynesian. Yeah. The Polynesian culture is different in the indigenous culture. They don't like looking in the eyes, man. You know, so if you don't know that as a coach, you're really disconnected as a person. Mm. And where you have a look at that um, New South Wales side, there's a lot of brothers in there. There's a lot of indigenous brothers in there as well, you know. So you got to understand everything like that. Um, so like, I think as a coach, me personally as a coach, I understand all that. Mm. I'm not far, I'm not too far disconnected 
from from playing and from all these guys that are playing now. Yep. I'm glad that I haven't played with anybody. I, w- I wanted to really wait until everybody that I played against is all done, yep. all retired. I think a lot of coaches make that mistake. They keep they go straight into coaching, like Nathan Brown. That's the blueprint, right? Yes. He fucking went from coaching, then he's slapping Trent Barrett on the sideline. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that's it's the fucking guy. Oh my god! What are you? That was wild as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so do, you know, do you know what I mean? But like he just played with him the year before. Yeah. <laughs> and, Trent Barrett, I know. And, that, and at that time, Trent Barrett was that dude. He yeah. was the Australian, like five eight or whatever. He's in. He was in New South Wales teams, and Brownie was just a club player. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. He was just a club player. Yeah. Slapped him, and Lance Thompson was there. God rest his soul. And I was just looking at that, going, "Fuck." And then I just looked at that and went, no, nah, you can't you can't coach like that quick. Mm. That's why I just stepped away from the game for like six years and mm. I was just building my own sort of stuff and I love podcasting. I think yes. that's my sort of thing. I don't I don't I'm not built for like the Fox Sports, the mainstream bullshit because yeah, they control up. the narrative and it's fucking shit. I'm a conversationalist. Yeah. And I am not sitting there in meetings and they try and control this shit and mm. I'm not sitting there with fucking Buzz Buzz Rothfield. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'd fall, I'd fall asleep. <laughs> I fucking love Buzz. But God damn. Brace doing a great job on those, all those things. It. But like, yeah. you know, like I, I look at the Channel 9 thing and it don't look fun. Mm. It yeah. don't look fun. It, it, looks, does, it looks like to do it would feel, like, feel quite stressful, I feel. It would. You know what I mean? Like, and I love JT and I love Billy and Cam and all that. But they're the biggest names in the sport. It doesn't mean they're the most talented. No. Do you know what I mean? Like Sonny Bill and all these boys. They just, we just need those guys on TV. So everyone, you get... You, eyes on on the tv yeah they're not breaking games down like they should i think uh, jt and joey has got the smartest brains in the fucking whole world in rugby league mm. but you never see that they don't use yeah. them. why aren't we they seeing that, that we see it sometimes but you watch espn and all that kind of stuff when they break games down and all that yeah. kind of stuff all the nuances yeah. of the game and like i want to know what fucking how jt is thinking when he sees a, a five on four down a short side i asked like jt and i we've been fucking locked in a room Talking about this shit. You know what I mean? Four yeah. in the four in the morning. You know what I mean? Just sitting there <laughs> yeah. going, what are you looking at? Because I'm shape. fucking, I'm a student talking of the game. Shape. And I love, I'm, we're talking shape. Yeah. We're just talking shape. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking shape yeah. at fucking four in the morning. And, um, you know, what What do you look at when the three man turns his shoulders in, when he's going down a short side and you've got Matty Bowen at the back, you've got a lead, you've got this, you got, what are you looking at the centre as he turned his shoulders in or out? Like, he sees that shit within a second. Mm. I'm like, fuck. And he always pulls the right trigger. And like all these little things. That, and and you understand, you got a guy like me who's hunting from the inside trying to break his ribs. Mm. And he's still like, you'll either hit the short guy, hit the guy at the back, or you'll hit the guy a face ball to the center because the center's turned in. That's There's like so many things and going he was on telling, in front we were, of him. We were talking yeah. for hours, mm. fucking hours. And I was just, because I want to know what the fuck a great halfback thinks like. And Joe, yeah. he's been my, my, one of my best mates for ages. Mm. And Joey, I sit there and have coffee with Joey and stuff like that. Mm. I want to know what Joey's thinking all, yeah. the, all the time as well because, you know, like I, I was blessed to play with those two guys. They were fucking at their peak. Like when I come through, Joey was the seven. Yeah. And then he retired and we had fucking JT. Yeah. You know, Danny Badiris and I had Cam Smith. Mm. Yeah, Aaron Lockyer, I had Trent Barrett. You had some weapons, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, a like, GI. And a, yeah, yeah, I had to just do, do my job. Yeah. You really only hear those conversations now from Cooper Crump. And Matty Johns when they do the Matty Johns show, but other than that, you don't get. They don't that break really it down enough, stuff. man. No, and Cooper Cronk's one of the smartest guys in the game. Yeah, yeah. but they don't utilize their skill. No. That's probably that's probably the closest show though that you've got to being like Almost that full on show. nerd out analytical, like as you say, where you're seeing the best. And Matty minds. Johns as is one of the best minds. Yeah, if he got He's into incredible. Origin, into Origin, or if him and uh, him and Joey did, that would fix everything because of the way they are and they just their their demeanor and who they are and the amount of respect that they demand within that. Like I spoke to Joey just before game three, excuse me, um, and he always throws it off. No, 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 no. We're sitting down in Bronny, like he he, you know, he can't even turn sideways. He's got to look like that because he's next fuck. <laughs> so we're both sitting down there and that way is the beach, right? So he's got the best fucking seat on the corner. And I'm like, I'm not sitting there. I'm just looking at the fucking bush. <laughs> so I'm sitting next to him, right? So it's two people sitting next to each other. He can't really look at me. I'm just sitting there. So I end up like facing this way so I can look out there. And I said, Joey, what if, what if, just, just let me let me talk. I was like, because don't you say fucking no. What if they go, Joey, we want you to be coach. Well, I, we need you to be coach, mm. right? Because Joey's never going to put his hand up, right? Mm. And he, he's not that, he's not that dude mm. ever. And if they go... We need you as coach. I want you to be the coach. What would you say? And he fucking, he just went, hmm. 
didn't say anything. But he didn't say, he didn't say fucking no. no. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, but I mean, like you got to play with the ego. You got to go, okay, Joe, we need you. New South Wales need you. If they fucking sell it the right way to Maddie and Joey, I think they might get it done. Interesting. Like, because I. I'd almost not even really considered Joey as just the option for a coach because, like, I mean, he's, he's obviously part of the staff, but I was like, I just always thought he's he'd be not like, part no. of Like, the staff is different because, like, people get it twisted because he goes down to ball work and he gets photographed. He's not staying in camp. Okay. You know what I mean? So people yeah, get it right. twisted. I said, Joey, he goes... That, is, he, that got me twisted, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, so, like, he still lives at Bronte. He just goes down to Coogee, does a little bit of stuff with the halves, but then they photograph him, like, because he's, he's in New South Wales gear, and they think he's part of the staff. Mm. Okay. No, he's not. He goes right. home, and then they all stay in camp, and then, he like, he'll go to their ball work sessions here and there, but, like, he's not part of the staff. Right. He's just Joey... And he just goes to train. He can turn up whenever he wants. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But he's yes. not actually part of the staff. Okay. He's so certainly that, not the coach. No, either. but that's no, 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 no. Like he comes in there. So he doesn't game plan. He doesn't do anything. Like, if he, you know, he'll give a couple of tips to Moses and all these other guys. And But that's about it. He's not He's not doing game plans and, and writing things up. Like, that's all on Freddie and, and Brandy. And would they – is that not the done thing to be like – if you're the coach and you're part of the – and you've got your staff. So Freddie's accumul- like bought into whoever he wants – there's no, would you would you think there's any world where he's going to Joey and going like, hey, come and work on this game plan with us, or it's pretty much like I've got my crew who I want to work on the game plan. Well, if with. he if he, he did, he just he would questions. just get Joey in. Yeah, why would you know? just get him in? Yeah, you yeah. just say Joey, I want you part of the staff, but yeah. he's never been part of the staff. He just always looks like the perception the is staff. reality, right? Yeah. When you put that on New South Wales uh, Instagram and all that kind of stuff, and he's always photographed and telegraphed, it looks like he's part of the staff. Even I darks you know, so you part of the staff? He goes, no, nah, I'm not. I just go. I just go to training sometimes for like okay. twenty fucking minutes, <laughs> and then right. goes. And then but go. but it looks you take a thousand photos yeah. of him. But it looks like the perception is mm. he's part of the camp. Well, he's not there for ten so days. So what do you That's think? Completely thrown. Yes. Away. Yeah. Do you not think his name yes. is not thrown up enough then around coaching? Like at the moment, I've heard Paul Gallen, James Maloney at one point, Michael Ennis Jeez, at one right. point. Someone said like, Danny Badiris. Danny Badiris. Bedsy seems like I mean Danny I mean, would do a good job. Yeah. But I think if I think if they just had Joey and then that Joey just brought in, it's the people that you bring in around the camp. Yeah, I think you know, like the you don't, you rarely coach Origin players. You know, it's about getting them connected and just wanting to play for each other and getting them up for that eighty minutes and get people around camp. Like, have a look at Queensland's camp. Mm. Yeah, Billy just brought in Cam Smith, JT, Nate Miles, GI, Alan Langer. Mm. Like, fuck's sake, there's every single kid there it's- that like has looked at all those players and God, you're you're a god to me. Like Cobbo and Xavier Coates will be looking at GI going, I know. fucking hell, it's GI. I don't want to let him down. Like every halfback looking at, or even the forwards looking at Nate Miles. You know what I mean? Like the hooker looking at, like Cam Smith, they have, they're just held in such reg- high regard. And, you know, you go out there and you still, and then you got Alan Langer out there. You know, you got, you know, they got all these greats, you know what I mean? Like that are just, they've done it before you and it's not that far away. It's not 20 years ago. It's fucking 10 years ago. That's yeah. the difference, right? Is mm. that they've got blokes that came out of that, you know, eight years in a row and then, you know, the three in a row they won after that. You know Whereas won, we've got to go back you know they've won a little bit further. Four, eight, 14 four and 18. Of 18. Yeah. yeah, we've won four and 18, yeah. 14. They've won 14 four out of 18. 18. Yeah. Come on. That's unbelievable. Fuck when someone told me that, my heart sunk. I know. We heard that, we heard that after game two and I almost threw up. <laughs> You know how Queensland just seemed to pick these dogs that just fucking okay. get it? Ruben like Ruben Cotter. Cotter, you know what I mean? Like Dallas Johnson. Yeah. And Dallas Johnson, like Nate, those type. Nate. Nate yeah. Nate's the fucking epitome of it. Yeah. He started it. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, the dog. He's the dog. <laughs> there, if you look at our current crop of players, I mean, I heard Mon Matty and Cooper saying this morning that historically Queensland probably picked tougher players and, and New South Wales pick, picks more skillful players. Yeah. Is there anyone that catches your eye that you think probably should have been a, given a shot in the current setup or in was, New South like, Wales? Yeah, not when there was available. Not right at the start. I was just looking around. I was like, yeah. You know, I, I was. I was even tossing up Hudson Young. I was like, yeah, he could. He could manage Origin. Mm. I still would have started Liam Martin straight away because mm. I, don't, I don't. Wouldn't waste his talent and his aggression straight away. Like sometimes, like sometimes a game can get away from you. Like twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. Yeah. I still think I would have went with. Um, Cam Murray as a starting lock, especially after game one, when we're just doing blocks for blocks, mate. That's just so easy to defend. Yep. And especially when you've got a well-oiled machine like um, like fucking Queensland. They love a block. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't see many blocks off uh, the Queensland. Describe a block. I just say, if I get the ball, 
lead runner. Like so, Yo gets block shape all the time with Penrith. Works a treat because they're always on the front foot. It's fucking hard when you're on the back foot. I get the ball here. Start at A, B. Got a lead runner. Then you got the fucking halfback out the back. Yep. Forwards will come through. They'll see that shit. They'll put pressure on you. They'll put pressure on the lead runner, and they'll get them to come through your line to get to your seven. That's what good defense is doing. Then they put pressure on like fucking Cleary, and they'll put pressure on Moses. Where most good halfbacks like Joey, he would fuck that block shit off. Yeah. Get out of the way and just zing me the ball flat, so he can get. Sh- he'll get. He'll get. So Bedsy will throw him a fucking thirty meter fucking dart mm. and hit him. And it, it blocked. So A, B, C. He's straight at the four man. And then right. you've got your back row leading and then you've got your fullback out the back and that's, that's way better shape. Right. Way better shape because it gives them too much time because Origin is so quick and everyone is so quick and so defensively like fucking drilled. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they know they want block play so they can just come up, check, check the Isaiah Yo. As soon as the ball, as soon as the ball releases and goes at the back, it's a fucking sprint. So you change, you change, you come up real quick and you, sort, you, you can't like fall for dummies or anything like that. So I've got to check you. And as soon as you pass the ball, you say you're the lead runner and it doesn't go to you and it goes out the back, I fucking shoot that hole and get straight to like Cleary or Moses. Mm. And Moses don't play like that in club football, does he? Mm. He fucking hates it. He gets fucking darts straight from the um, from the nine, a 20, 30 metre. So he goes, bang, he's straight at you. Mm. He's not used to playing off the, off the blocks. Yeah. And it took him out of the game, even though he, he, I thought he played really good in game two. It took him out of the. It sort of took him out of the, his running game out yeah. of the game. He wants to play short sides and all that kind of stuff. And I thought he had a crack, but the block plays in Origin can only work sometimes if you're on a long side. Just say an, uh, like just say ten meters off, and it's like a long ball to Yo, and then it's out the back again, and then another long ball, and then you try and get to the other side. It's a long shift, but not but not when you're twenty meters out because defenses are just too good. Mm. Sort of felt and they like, and, that's then, what and it, then that's why that's why we couldn't. And yeah. then what happens right at the end, right when you come up, and then they go on like that, and we block, 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 bang, and then we turn fucking Frizzell under. That's what you want as a fucking as a defense. Bang, you would hit Frizzell. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then they get their their line set again. And even if they had a dummy to Frizzell, look how many times did they throw us out in the sideline? Oh, because yeah. it's that Countless it's that times. one or two meters where how many times did they fucking score tries in that middle because they weren't fucking around with those block shapes. They were hitting front guys and then the, the boys would just be fl- flicking it back. Do you know what I mean? So you could engage A and B, flick it back to um, to Harry Grant and, they fucking, and they'll get you somehow. Yeah. And even with little things like, I think in, in game one or game two, like, so just say if you're in the middle of the field, Harry Grant, I mean, uh, Teddy is, is always at A, one side of the ruck, right? So just say if he's on that side of the ruck, Harry Grant would do, a th- uh, he would run this way and then do a 360 back because Teddy would be on his bike straight away. He'd kick through there. And then it'd be a try. They scored a couple of tries off it. Yeah. Just that's smartness. And that's, you know what that is? That's from fucking, what's it? That's what J2, JT and Aaron Payne used to do to Billy mm. because Billy would be in the line. And then Aaron Payne would dummy that way, come back around there because Billy's already on his bike and it's too fucking hard. Yeah. And you nail that kick. And then you got fucking Hammer and all these sort of blokes and, the, and Val and that just screaming through that other side. Mm. That's just fucking knowledge yeah. and footy IQ and knowing Teddy, his cues, he just comes up and he chases the ball. He's, he can't turn back around. Mm. And Harry Grant goes, just turns around, little kick through here. And they've done it a few times. Even if, even if it wasn't a try, it was a repeat set. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's they, interesting you say that as well because it's obviously they've got all these sharp minds have sat down and tried to work out a game plan that's going to work, sort of exploit our flaws. Yeah. Whereas... You said earlier that Joey would go away from block shape, and yet in game two, all it was was Joey block hates shape, block which, shapes, which, which indicates exactly what he said. Joey earlier. hates block shape. Joey shapes. actually isn't as involved as we all think he is. No, no. He would have no fucking block shape. Mm. You know what I mean? There's block shapes coming in, in certain parts of the field. I like just say from the, the 40 to 40, when it's just like it, the, the defense isn't as fucking boom in your face. You could sort of run a block play and then just get to the middle of the field or the other side of the field, like just the other side of the post. Yeah, that's all right. Block, block, bang, back row or front row, hitting the other side of the post. And then you split the four. Then you, then you try and get four on the short side and six on the long side. And that's when your ball players come in. You know what I mean? Like, and you're trying to get a big boy on that, on that long side, right? On the, on the four side. Because you try. So just say when you get that block shape. So block shape, boom, boom, and hit the, just say a, a lock on the outside of the right side post. Mm. They call it like the crack line. <laughs> crack <line. laughs> we call it crack line um, so it's that number right outside the post so like you have four and you have six 
right? But we're trying to get at the, you usually try and get at the back row, try and get a big boy to travel. You want like a Lindsay Collins or someone who's really not fucking that, you know, he, he's all right, but he's good in the middle, but you sit him on an island and then you fucking get Moses attack and attack and attack. You know, like, like that's what you really want to get. And that's what they fucking do all the time because DC get those short sides. You know, see that short side when they fucking went down that thing and the little kick and all that kind of yeah. shit? That's, that was just, that was five on four. That's what you look for all the time and you've got to be able to pull the trigger. So that's the little things. That's the only time you would use a block is to get to that, to get to that shape. Or you could just fucking zing the ball and two pass and you get to the right side. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's a lot of there's a lot of options. You don't have to do the block shape. I just I'm against the block shape in the anti block. Anti block shape. I'm against the block shape in fucking good ball. Yes. Yes. Good ball is in the twenty. Yeah. It's yeah. just got to be fucking sharp, fucking good lines. When they fucking when Liam Martin scored that first try in Adelaide, From Jerome, it yeah. was fucking boom boom front line. Go out the back, fucking you nice make your ball. tackle. Yeah. That was perfect. I gotta piss my pants. He's got Boys. one of Don Bradman's bats. Don Bradman's bat, yeah. Literally, yeah. Fuck. So, Mike um, Tyson belt, WBC belt. Just yeah, that? yeah. Where do you buy all this shit? Uh, auctions. Did you, you go to auctions? Yeah, I've been to auctions. Yeah, and I'll just really? like, yeah, and I'll be like, slice it. Don't fucking sell that. I'll buy it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll go to the guy who's running it. So just say it's fucking mine. Like, just say it's it's, it's out, already it's gone. Out. Yeah. So I've always got a good relationship with those guys. So did you used to? Is that? Did you get all that stuff when you're younger, or like, is that something you still get now? Like, still when if it's something good, I think I got um, fuck, what is it? Uh, I think it's Ronaldo, LeBron's, and Jordan's. Like a ball sign from Jordan, and then like a, a, a Tom Brady's a Tom Brady ball, all in one fucking thing too. Jesus. And Ronaldo's boot or some shit like that. Yeah, just some some of them. They got some gems at like some yeah. auction, at some uh, like um, when you do the fucking like a sports day or some shit like yeah, a sports yeah. prezzo or something yeah, like yeah. a luncheon okay, and that yeah, a luncheon okay, i'm like right. i want that yeah. i just, just fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing's not for sale anymore have you paid yeah. a shitload for anything not that much not as much like i got the michael jordan signed jer playing jersey i got it from perth right mm. i don't give a shit about basketball over there and mm. i was like is that legit it's got all the papers and that i said how much is it going for oh someone said they put like a 500 hundred dollar bid i'm like oh i just said i'll just i'll buy it for a thousand right now cash they go, okay, sweet. And then they fucking shipped it over and everything. Jesus. I was like, you dumb fucks. <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking West Coast Eagles one we went for fucking 10 grand. Yeah, yeah I yeah, know, yeah. right? Like, all funny? they care about is, is that. They don't yeah. care about But I said, is that legit? And they got all the papers and they said, oh, you idiots. So, so like, have you got a room with all this shit? No, like, no. Yeah. I'm going to put it, when we have a new studio for the Levels podcast, yeah. I'm just going to put it all in there. Yeah, okay. Hectic. You know what I mean? Like, I've, like yeah. Well, so my, my partner, she's just like, what are we going to do with this shit? I said, <laughs> I don't know. Because I didn't realize how much I had. Oh, right? really? And I was like, looked in, I looked in the fuck, I looked in the fucking uh, garage and like, ah, I didn't know I bought that. <laughs> I didn't know I bought that. Forgot Man, about United that United fucking jersey. Wow. Jesus. Mate, you'd want to have whatever, suit, wherever you get your studio, make it nice and fucking Yeah, it'd be all right. Yeah, it'd look the, sick though. No, it'll look good because it'll be everywhere. You know what I mean? It's a bit yeah. of everything. So it's, it's not like, you know, rugby league shit everywhere, yeah. you know, like. The Don's bat's cool. The Don's like bat's that. good, yeah. That's seriously It's cool. good. I love that. That sort of shit will appreciate i don't know about like i don't know generally with memorabilia whether it all appreciates but something like some of that don bradman the, yeah bat, the don like, bradman bat will there's only 500 up. made too that's crazy that's fucking yeah. wild wait have you guys looking at studios now or is it just something yeah. that will be well, i think like, so i think it'll be around here i think there's a lot of like a lot of space around here i think yeah, for sure you know i think you know we think like the batuta boys uh they're fucking champions mm. you know they, they were the first ones and you guys as well like reached out straight away when um when we're starting our own thing so yeah. we never forget that but um, yeah, but Tudor boys are good. No, oh, they're great. He's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a good thing going over there. Yeah. So um, you know, so when we're ready to sort of you know to break off from there, we'll probably be around like the Alexandria area. It's good. There's, as you said, just the get space. a cool joint and just like you know, and then we can film when we want. You know, yes. we're not on our own time. We like. We're on Batuta's time. Yes. You know what I mean? So yep. it's like, and it's in Woolloomooloo when it's in the city. It's it's a nice joint, but like you know, at the end of the day, you got to have your own. For sure, you must. It must be satisfying to. Uh, when you guys have gone out on your own and for it to just keep like going from strength to strength. Yeah. There was a video we were talking about the other day on YouTube, your origin one. Like, I don't know how much you pay attention to the numbers and no, shit you guys are doing, but like fucking 85,000 yeah. people watching your origin review. Yeah. And, 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 and like, because like, Luke, you know, Luke, he's yeah. a numbers nerd. So he's like, he loves all that sort of shit. And he was telling me, I said, oh, that's fucking, is that good? It's pretty good. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. But like, considering it's that, it's considering that we've only done, what, fucking, 19, 19 rounds, right? So yeah. pretty much 20 eps. Yeah. 
And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Like, yeah. Just like you guys, you know what I mean? You just got to start. But, I mean, we had a bit of a head start probably on you guys. You started, like, fucking years ago. Yes. But because of, like, no Hoz doing the are. YKTR and, like, and I was doing my own sort of thing, just honing my sort of podcast skills. And, you know, it's not really my main, like, revenue. You know what I mean? I've got other things going on. and But I enjoy this. Yeah. It's mad, you yeah. know what I mean? It's just like, it's and fun. collaborating with you guys and like everyone's sort of helping each other because we mm. all want to grow the game, right? 100%. Yeah, you know, and I just don't like other people who try and come into this space and just try and be real fucking assholes. Yes. No, it's been- like, there's, there's no egos and stuff like no, that. I'm like, cool. and, and even like younger players and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'd try and help out anyone. You know, I'll get offered that many fucking podcasts. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I bet. I like, bet. Why? You, and the thing is- the, the difference is, you know, I come on here because I get it, we're mates, right? Mm. And but the other guys, they would come on just for clickbait, right? Yeah. They'd ask me fucking that many questions about from fucking day dot to to right now, and I'm like, you're just taking the piss, right? Yeah. You don't really give a fuck about me. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we, I think there's a genuine like mateship here, and Absolutely. it's like it's not, you know, you're not sitting here wanting to get these fucking clickbait. Oh fuck, Willie says he wants to be coach. No, no. like fuck no. no. no you know what I mean? But like these guys would, and I don't trust them. Mm. You know what I mean? You only start, you only start in your podcast. So I'm like, I don't mm. fucking trust you anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and I'm, they're, they're trying to get me on there, and I'm like, I don't want to be rude and say, mate, no fucking chance. Mm. I just don't answer back. <laughs> but yeah, but you would have been pulled in a million different directions based your career, though, right? From yeah. a media perspective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that was sort of like, you know, 360. I was on that for a little bit. And I just didn't like the way that it was structured, you know? It's they want you to be that, you know, like real loud, like sort of, you know, remember MG when it was back in the day, you'd come out with some real outlandish shit, you know what I mean? Now he doesn't because he's, he's settled in Triple M and he's he said some real fucking smart stuff now. But at the start, it was like a bit of a shock jock. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't look at myself like that. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. say how it is and I'm like, I, I stick to what I say. Yeah. But I'm not an idiot. Mm. You know what I mean? And you're they'll, they'll try. For, and you're not they'll saying try, for clicks, right? Yeah, they'll like, try and portray you as that that yeah. guy. Well, yeah, I'm you're like, not no. just saying outrageous things for the sake of. Saying yeah, that. I'm not saying that shit. Like, no. I'd rather like I'm I'm all for the players. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not a company man. Where I can see a lot of these guys are company men, when especially when you see this RLPA shit. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I was just like current, you know, like former players who like hanging shit on players. Mm. I've found it kind of because have a look who they're working for. Exactly right. Fox Sports. I know, but it's so it's so obvious but that that's what's going on. I'm like, how the f don't but it is obvious, but it's obvious to us. Yeah. It's not obvious to the fucking ninety percent of fucking sheep. That's a great point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They they they're, they're working for the man, right? They're working for, you know, like Gordy. You're not going to expect Gordy to come out and fucking back the players. He sits on a fine line, right? Mm. But you know, Fox pays fucking bills, mate. You yeah. can't come out and just and start yeah, no. fully siding with the players. You no. know I mean? He's been he's, okay with it. He's, he's okay, okay but it. he's like, he but just. you can tell that he, it's cognizant in his yeah, mind. Yeah, and I'm just like, Gordy's like, you know, some, and they want Gordy to say something because he's Gordon Tallis. Yeah. And like, I love Gordy. He's a fucking good friend of mine. And I'm like, fuck, they shouldn't put Gordy out like that, that because position. Gordy's all players. He's all about the players. But then on the other side, he's the face of Fox. Yeah. You know, and they want him to be that sort of guy who says what he wants, you know, but then like he's. He he's, seems like he's been more pro media in mate, his recent yeah, statements. But he fucking sat out a whole year. That's sort of what I found confusing. I yeah, think, but like, so he's like, all about like fucking player movements and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, we didn't go to the Daily M's in 2003 for these movements. But like, we I think he sort of forgot a lot of that shit until Clint Newton reminded him. Which was a pretty, it was a pretty like hectic. You know, you don't fuck with Nudo. He's highly educated and mm. he fucking he knows everything. Mm. So like Hoops and Gordy were out of, out of, out of their league. Yeah. yeah, you need to come with some fucking hardcore questions, like fucking a bit better than that because yeah. he, he was, was just very like, composed. Yeah, and, just like, and he know. was you know like and and and, and you know Gordy is sort of getting told to stick up for for like you know the NRL yeah. so to speak. Yeah, because you know Gordy, you don't give a fuck about the NRL. <laughs> Not that much. Yes. No. But well, then it's also, it affects the media product because they don't get the interviews is, yeah. and they can't sort of commercialize Yeah, but I mean, way, like but the media are having a sort of, why are we getting, dude, it's been a week. We also, haven't sat out, we haven't sat out for a fucking year. Yeah. Like they're yeah. going, oh my God, like some fan hit me and goes, oh my God, the fans are copying this. I said, this is two days in. I said, this has been two days. Mm. I said, 
you, how many interviews do you want to see? Yeah. You know what I mean? How is yeah. it, it affecting you I feel so like much? Of all the things they could have done, it's like the least. This is the least? The, the least like, effect on anyone, really. They're like, this is cover the up lower, the NRL logo. I'm like, I wouldn't even fucking notice if they'd fruit. done it. Like, no one's yeah. like, you know, it's not that. But it's the fact that they're doing it. Yeah. And they can't have access to the, play, to the, to the players anymore. And they don't like that mm. because the media always get their own way. 100%. In the and States, whole seasons get lost. Oh, mate, they so don't you put it in... If that put happens, put it in, in context. Sure, you start to get put it in context. Upset. Yeah. 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 You're missing out. It's going to be for a week. A week, two weeks. Yeah. But it sucks because it's during Origin, right? Yeah. And you want to hear players. Imagine if it was a decider. That would be tough. Yeah. Would, then now, you'd really and, have And the, play, the players are showing some balls. Like, I like this. Mm. I like what I'm seeing. What's your memory of it when from 2003 when you were like... Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember. So was that just... Was the boycott then just sit out Dally M's? Was that the boycott? Yeah, sit out Dally M's, yeah. And do you... Cost me Dally M back row of the year. Oh, I did Okay. Did you ever win that? You won a fucking yeah. couple of those, though, didn't you? No, I didn't. I think I would have won it that year, but... Um, do but they... Do, in the, at that period, do you have, like, senior players who... Like, did you... Were you across it or you... We, we, like, yeah, we, we were doing? across it. Like, I mean, I was a current, like, Australian player and, and New South Wales player. So, But we had really... wasn't that good a leadership. We weren't all in. You know what I mean? Like, that was probably the first time that we went all in. Like, mm. Butsy was the... Um, was the uh, the CEO then, and we're like, it's neither here nor there. Like, what's the RLPA really doing for us? You know, we're paying, we're, we're paying to be part of the RLPA. It was like, it's like, eh, fuck, who cares? It's doing much right. for us, not really. But then that was probably the catalyst that really started everyone sort of together. Yeah, paying more and attention. And you know, to it cost it. fucking Gowie a Dally M. I oh, know. <laughs> I oh, know that's fucked. They should have just Spewing. fucking given it to him, right? Like, yeah, like as an asterisk next to him, he would have won it easily. But um, that was um, yeah, it was it was. It's been weird the RLPA. It's the only it's it's great that it's come together now. But I just think the uh, the NRL just they don't respect the RLPA. They just don't. Yeah. Until we make a stance like this, then they'll go. All right, these guys mean business. But they'll not, what's Philandy's going to do? And uh, Abdo, they're going to what if they come to the table and go? Still stands, mate. Take it or leave it. Mm. What do you do then? Yeah, then he's a like, fucking dog. Fucking he, he, yeah, PVL. He's, he's a weapon. He's a, he don't give he's a, a fuck, mate. No. You know? Do do we? You know? Do we negotiate a little bit? Can we get back to the table? That's all they want. Can we back get back to the table and these little things? Can we get them sorted and then we'll sign? What if? You know? That's why I asked Jamie Bill. What if he just goes no? Mm. What do you do then? What's the next stage? Yeah. Because the worst thing is a strike, right? It'll fuck yeah. the game. Well, but then, but no, the players are going to pay then as well. Yeah, because, is... you know, it's not like, you, you know, some players, 1% are on a million dollars. There's a lot that are on about 120, the minimum wage. Yep. You know exactly what I mean? Right. Some are on training trials, $1,000 a week. You know, so it's, it's, it's a big fucking call. So we don't want that. But I'm like, Philandis knows that we don't want that. And if he really wanted to play hardball, he'd he be like, do it. fucking, I'll oh, dare you. Do you think it could get to that point? Do you think that what the players want is enough for them to to warrant a strike? No, I don't think the players want that much. It's not about it's not about the um, it's not about salary money. cap. No, as soon no, as you I'm, hear people talk about money, you go. What okay, I mean you're is what I mean is, is is what is what they want important enough to go to the next step. Yes. Yeah, Do you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, I know like, what you're is, saying. Like, is, 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 is going? Is, I reckon is, that they'll come back know, to is us. It, is is um. You know the life after footy, the 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 man, the health management, the, the CTE, the, all all these sort of like life after footy funds, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is that important enough for you to strike? Mm. That's what you're saying. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Maybe not. You know what I mean? Like we've, they've they've come this far. Mm. You know what I mean? And the salary caps here, but they obviously does mean a lot to them. Yeah, because they're worried because they they understand like just say our our generation. There's been a lot of hardship. And these, the, some of these guys played with some of these guys. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think it's a bit more sensitive and it, and it, and it hits them a little bit different, I think. A bit more tangible. Yeah, yeah, it is, you know, because it's a little bit more real because we weren't really – they didn't associate with anyone from the 90s and sort of 2000s, but they know people from the 2010s that are just retired, fell on hardship, all this kind of yeah, stuff. Right. So it's a little bit more understanding yeah. and I think they really want to fight for that. Because you see that the you know the HR the CTE the you know like people getting injured and all this kind of stuff and um, bodies fucking falling apart and um, you know the health insurance all that kind of stuff all those little things they should they should sign off on it yeah. to be honest the league you know you give everything to to the yeah. game you know That's I'm right. a big believer on the in the health insurance like just say Cam Smith retired he put what 18, 19 years in he retires some mate 
some person played three years, he retires at the same time, he gets the exact same health insurance as, as Cam Smith. It's not fair, is it? No, it's for, like I think it was it Andrew Fafita who's come out and he's like, mate, like my knees are fucked, yeah. my back's fucked, like I've got all these he's surgeries and I've I've got like eight two surgeries years. I need to have. Yeah, I've got and, and I've got to get them all done here. Otherwise, like like and you don't, and, and like he's probably one of those blokes who needed ASAP. Like just say I retired at thirty six. I don't remember two thousand seventeen and eighteen. <laughs> I was away. I was traveling all the time. My body was all right, and now yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I try and keep fit. I try and keep keep healthy because I don't want those injuries to sort of come up. Yeah. But some players, like he retired because of his body gave up. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's like he put in what 10, 12 years. He just they. If you put in that much, you deserve at least ten years of like life insurance. If you put in fifteen plus, I think it should be like a whole your whole life. Yeah. yeah. Should be covered. If you put one to five years in, you get three or something. Like that. It should be like. Tiered. Tiered, it should yeah. be tiered, you know what I mean? One to five, you get fucking three or four years. Five to ten, fucking ten. Ten to fifteen, you know. Yeah. Fifteen, fifteen plus life. You know, yeah. something like that. You know, it's um, it's just unfair. Well, especially for for Fida, getting eight surgeries in two years is just outrageous. It's, it's, it's like it's absolutely, absolutely and he's outrageous. Not, he probably won't have time. No, no. that's it, right? That's you know, every he, three months. <laughs> you know, he's got a family. Yeah. He wants to. Like, what's your quality of life? After that, you know, and that's what you got to look at. And that's what the players, the current players, that's what I'm saying. Like, they've, Wade Graham's played with Fafita. He won a grand final with him. He's one of the delegates. So it's a little bit more emotional for these, um, the guys that are in the RLPA because they play with guys like that and they're seeing what, uh, what he's going through. They're seeing what other players are going through, you know, and it's not fucking good. Yep. They see the mental health issues. They see some guys that are really struggling. They're like, fuck, we can't, we can, we've got to stop this. And if we don't stop it now, they're just going to keep going the the the, the NRL, and they'll just keep yeah. taking the piss. And they'll be like, unless we make a really strong stance, which I think they are, then things will get sorted. And it'd be five years for this CBA, and then we can just fucking keep building. Keep going. Just need a fucking really strong relationship. Mm. Be on the same page. Mm. You know, don't fight against each other. We don't want more money. We just want all. Well, that's these already been sorted. So that's it's not already an issue. been sorted. But yeah. I think the the game the the NRL go. Oh, we gave you fucking. You know, the, it's going up. So going shut up. up. Yeah. You know, we just don't <laughs> want like we just, we just don't want you to put another three games on us without us without any without sign us up. going. Hang on, like fucking three games is a lot. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, listen, you could argue strongly that there's too many games too now, many games, yeah. but it's because of that, and it's because of TV rights, and because yeah. it's make makes money. It's actually a fuckload of rugby league to be playing. Like twenty seven rounds already. It. It's, it's, it's so ridiculous. much footy. Well, that's why the NFL is so like. Exciting, right? You get 17 games. Yeah. And they're all fucking balls out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if you played ours as 20 games. We're at round 19 now. I know. Like, Are we you, round 20 or round 19? Round 20. Yeah, so yeah. round 20 is the last round. So imagine what would happen. Like, they just need to fuck around with it a little bit. Imagine if they just had 20 rounds, then picked Origin at the end of the year and then into, into the Australian things. Yeah. You, something like that. And then like you're that. actually picking the Australian team yeah. and Origin and all that Yeah, and shit. you pick, yeah. like, that's, that's when you get the best of the best. Mm. Yeah, everyone's fit as hell, and like you pick. It comes up every year, but it's you just can't help it. it People just feel the flatness of the of the. But like, look how look how happens. much like you know the injuries in that are, are really like plays are copping it through Origin, mm. like and you know backing up from Origin. Um, it it just ruins the competition. Hard, and look at last week, man. Come on, like four games. Fuck's sake, it's boring. There's that the best awful. players aren't there. <laughs> that was awful, and I got to watch these fucking games. <laughs> I was just sitting there going, "Oh, it's great, you know. Like, fair enough. It's, you know, you got you got to play, but like, surely just say if they played, you know, twenty two games straight, and there was no Origin in between, yeah. and then you just fucking had a six week, six week international slash Origin sort of segment at the end of the year. Mm. Yep. And they had a Pacifica Cup, they had New South Wales and Queensland, and then you just go on a kangaroo tour around about late October, November. Yeah. It's funny Something talking like about that. Like I don't know. I don't know. Like. Mate, honestly, you know what scared them off? Unfortunately, was during COVID. They had the origins all at the end of the year. It was November, but that was it. Was a different world then. It wasn't. I don't think that no, was a fair like reflection November of what origin, November's if, too late. If you first had a shorter foremost. season, then you would be able to put it in. But like 100%. talking to Schofield, like a he's a mate of ours who played for West Coast Eagles. He's like, he just can't believe that the competition just d d basically stops and like all your good players yes. are ripped out. He's just like, he's like, if this it's is the only AFL, competition in the whole world, where you rip all your best players out of the comp and just sort of keep playing. He's like, he's like, it's what like, the fuck It's like is three going grand on? finals in six weeks. And then you got to go back to fucking club football. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard. But then Mentally, also, I bet. it's hard, mate. It's hard to go back and go, you got to be the best player now for club. Mm. Like Cleary, Cleary probably said it the best, I think, but he's probably come from a different, 
different angle because he's got fucking Leota and Fisher Harris. Like, yeah. yeah, let's just give him all the rest. Yeah, it's a bit different when you've yeah. got those blokes. It's yeah. different when you're coming back to the to the to the Titans or the Bulldogs or, or a lower a lower team. Mm. Like you need points, yeah. You need you need your points, right? Um but yeah, there's so many so many things. And and would they ever budge on it? I think Villandis is a forward thinker. He seems like he's prepared to make moves if the moves make sense. You know, he's not mm. someone who who would be stuck in like, a, oh, this is how it's always been done, so we do it this way. Yeah, but because I mean, you know, Origin ain't broke. You know no, what I mean? No. And we love fucking Origin. And the build-up towards Origin, it starts from fucking round six or something like that, and then it yeah. just comes all the way to round 20. Oh, no. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. We've talked about Origin. It's fucking crazy. It's it holds <laughs> and mentally taxing yeah, on yeah. the players. Like You've got to be up. All the time, club football, fucking origin football, playing your best football. You could get dropped. You could be injured. You could be. There's a lot of things going on in these young kids at the moment, and it's like you got to deal with social media. You got to look at like Luai. He cops that shit all the time. All these other players, like Tom's getting injured. Like it's it's a, it's fucking hard mm-hmm. to maintain that fucking top level. Now look at Teddy. Teddy's what well, he's been dominating 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, six years at the top, and everyone's just thinking he's done because he's played so much football. Yeah, in that in those six years. Yeah, he's just he's probably and a World Cup mean? last year as well. Yeah, yeah like Cup it's just fucking. There's some big, big, big fucking long years. Ne- and every finals series he's been. Like playing I remember in, in 2004, yeah. I think Minnie and I played. I think he played 42 games and I played 41. In how long? In a year. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. hectic. It was just like, and that was all rep football. That's the city average country. career length of a fucking football. Yeah, we Literally. played that. Yeah. We played that in one in one in one, one year. season. That's and it was wild. just like, and we just thought. We just laugh because you're 24. Yeah. Gives a shit. You're <laughs> still fit as fuck. Do you, like, uh, I was, I look at you sometimes and I'm like, is he training still regularly or are you one of those lucky bastards who's just jacked? No, I'm, I, I, was, I train. I train smart, man. I'm, um, I'm in the middle of a, I fast a lot. I'm 40 fucking four hours into a 72 hour fast. Oh, really? Yeah. What's so, the, where, like, what? I just do it for the, the, the health benefits. Does it and are there? Because I there is, man. I mean, I just got to think. Like, just say your body's constantly just working on just digestive your digestive system and your fucking brain and everything. You know, like Mm. food, all this kind of stuff. So it just gives your body a bit of a rest. How and it gives you chance. Gives all the gives your body like your knee and like to and other injuries that you have. Fucking time to give all the good nutrients on that. Right. You know what I mean? So if you can do it, like, and it's something that you don't just roll into a 72-hour fast. I mean, like, I'd, I'd usually do, like, 24-hour, 24-hour, like, 36 hours and sort of just try and dabble with up. it, you know? Like, and I do that. Plus, I train, like, at E-Lab, different training, right? It's like they have, you know, it's, it's not all about weights, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's more about functional mobility and movement, a heap of core, stuff that makes me feel. I don't walk out of the gym going, fucking my neck is jacked up and all that. You feel... <laughs> longer and taller and like you just feel yeah, stronger okay. and and i just try and eat well you know like when you get older you just the amount of education and knowledge that's out there oh yeah fuck man you'd have to be an idiot you know, not if, if you want to get in shape you can get in shape easy yes you know so and, I, and i'm a role model to these young kids and i've got to be a trainer i don't want to look like a fat mess you know what i mean <laughs> i still want to do the drill i still want to do the drills and that with them and, yeah. and show them you know like you know i'm 43 years old i can still do the, do the drills and that with them and you know it's just like you know talking to young 16 year old kids plus I'm you know in, in the business world as well you know it's all perception is reality like you, how you look at you know if some bloke comes in and he's a big fucking fat mess you're probably <laughs> looking like you're not you're not disciplined enough to look after yourself yeah. how am I going to give you this money yeah, yeah. What, you know if I come in like that and they're going why don't I fucking invest in you yeah. you can't even invest in yourself it's a great point you know what I mean so yeah. like I look at that and I'm like so I've got really good people around me like really they're, they're like that you know like they're like they're fucking worth a lot of money and it's all it's all that. It's, that's, that's how they think. They're like, if you come in there looking like an absolute mess, you're not going to get nothing. Mm. Do you train they, every day? Yeah, try and do something every day. Yeah, okay. And how, so how? Well, how, so just on the fasting thing. Yeah, like, I was going to say, how often mad. do you fast? Like, I'll do like 24 hours, like, n- but mostly every day. Like, so I'll eat just one meal a day. Really? So okay. you'll go to your eat and then you go 24 hours and then you eat. Yeah, yep, yeah. Okay. So a big meal, just, like you're pounding a. Yeah, fucking try big and get like a heap of protein and stuff like and vegetables. That's about it. Try wow. to stay off bread and all that sort of shit. And you're hungry? But I'm just saying, no, I'm not hungry, no. Once you get past that, so like I got past last night, I got power through today and it'd be like 48 hours and I'll get through tonight and then like, but it'd, be hard, it'd be hard to get through Origin, right? Yeah, right. Because there's a lot of fucking piss and there's a lot of like- You're just you on know. water. Would you have any? Yeah. you have juices or- Oh, lemon, lemon, squeeze some lemon in some um, lemon tea and all that kind of stuff. 
Wow. Still take your subs and everything like that. You can't. Yeah. So liver tablets always take that kind of stuff. Yeah, Sponsored okay. by Body Science, man. So you can't really fuck up. You mm, know what okay. I mean? Like everything like that. They're so good, you know, like, but they've got everything there. So um, I don't know. Like I think when you get a bit older, like I'm 43, like I don't, I don't want to just get all, I just want to get old. Yeah. Like, you got a lot more life left old, to live. You know, yeah. I feel like I'm halfway through life. Yes. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. I feel like I'm halfway through life. I'm, mm. you know, like I want to be I want to be in this space for a while. I don't wanna, I don't want to lose my fucking mind. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think exercise is such a big part of that and health because I see a lot of ex players like Turvy and all that with dementia and all that kind of stuff yeah. and I fucking and it breaks my heart. I'm like they're fucking 20 years older than me. You know what I mean? They yeah. fucking got hit. This is exactly the same. I think I've got hit harder than Turvy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and there's still there's still that alcohol consumption's fucking gone from here down to here. You know what I mean? Bit smarter with all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So health is wealth at the moment, and I'm just thinking like that. So it's like it's a good space to be in. You know, like you and you, and I'm way more productive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I st- don't get it twisted. I still love having a fucking good time. Yeah. yeah. But I just choose my I choose my moments. Yeah. Yes. Bit more selective. Yeah. yeah. And when you get older, you know, not everyone's a bunch of fucking raging alcoholics. Yes. I mean, it depends who you fucking hang so with. Hanging out, if I fucking you, stay you here any longer. The road's out. <laughs> but you know, you just got to choose. You know, most yeah. of my most of my real close mates, they're all you know into businesses and like really successful, and they're all fucking focused all the time. So you are like a part. You know, you, you, what do they say? Like you're, the you're, company you keep. The company though, you yeah. keep, and they're all fucking focused, and they're all health and all that kind of stuff. And then mm. I've got some other mates who don't mind. Have, I love having a good time, but they're focused as well. So everybody's in the right in the same sort of mind space. Mm. Which is good because you don't want to hang out with the blokes still going on benders. No, exactly. Like you just because you just fucking do it. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's still in me. Yeah, I just yeah. suppress it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like I'm like, I know what I'm like. Yeah, I know Hulk, what I'm mate. like. I'm just yeah. like it's like a fucking. And if I want to go, I'll go. Yeah, like Big I'm not one of these. I'm not one of these. Though. I'm not one of these guys who's going to go. Oh no, I'm fucking done with everything because I know what I'm like. Yeah. You got to know what you. You know, got to know what you like. Yeah. You can't just think, go say, "Man, I'm off the piss for fucking six years." Mm-mm. No way. No. You were. T- I think you were saying on James Graham's podcast. I may have got it wrong, but like you were talking about uh, taking mushrooms. Yeah. And that's not so much in the bender sense, though. No way. No. No way. Um, well, we just legalized psilocybin in New I'd, South Wales. I'd heard, I'd heard about that. Well, I'd only. I think I'd heard it mentioned on like the radio or something. But yeah. I love mushrooms as well. Yeah. Again, look, I don't mind having a rip and tear, but also like. I feel there's like a massive benefit Huge to benefit. taking them. Yeah, that I'd, I would, and I'd never taken them until maybe like three or four. I years I think you got a really bad rap because they were in Bali and you're taking a shake and you're all pissed and then just yeah. start spinning out. I yeah. said I'm ne- I was never like that. I never mm. used to take that sort of stuff. One of my mates was like sort of into it for the proper reasons, right? Like it's for your brain, your cognitive sort of start. You know, your neuro passages passage, passages start connecting again, mm. and that's what really fucks up. I'm not a neurosurgeon, so I'm fucking paraphrasing here. Don't worry, that's yeah. never a way. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, so both sides of your brain turn on, right? Both sides, and it's fucking real, it's, it's really good for you, especially if you get, uh, you start worrying about CT, you start worrying about the HIA, the amount of hits that you've copped, all that kind of stuff. So just microdosing and all that kind of stuff and taking stuff, it's fucking, it's, the studies are amazing. So mm. if you do your research on the stuff, you'll be like, this is fucking, where has this been? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and you, you've probably taken them and you've taken them. Like, yeah. it's like, and on it, you don't take them and go out in the street, do you? No. Well, fucking no way. <laughs> <laughs> you, sit, you, you know, you do it properly. You, you, you sit at home and you like listen to some music and stuff like that and just fucking close your eyes, concentrate, wear one of those things over your fucking knives and lay back and just fucking go. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's another world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I don't do this fucking every day. I don't, I'm not condoning it, each to their own. But, um, there's a way – I found, like, it, there's a way that it sort of allows you to take, like, a mental inventory. Like, you can sort of – there's obviously the, like, you know, the trippy sort of shit, but yeah. just, like, being able to sort of, you know, go through and sort through your thoughts and your mind and just generally, yes. like, see things a bit more clearly or from a different it's perspective. It's clear. It's right. It's, like, it's yeah. clarity, right? And, yeah. I, and, like, a lot of things I started um, dabbling in it when I retired and stuff like that and, like, what was I going to do and, like, things like DMT and all that kind of stuff and – you know, just that that sort of spiritual world. You know, like I was always wondering, was my dad there when I was when I was playing? Mm. That was big on. That yeah. was big for me, because mm. and then like I I did that and I saw my father. Really? Yeah. And he said, "I'm proud." I was fucking in tears. I was just like bawling my eyes out and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. like he was there. He said he was there. Like wow. I'm, I'm sitting there talking to him. Like it was a vision. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and this is I'm like how's this? You know. If you have, everyone doesn't know what DMT is, it's like that dimethyltryptamine, which is like 
in your pineal gland. We produce that anyway. Mm. And that's what that's what makes you dream. But this shit is like the spiritual molecule, it's called. Mm. Do you fucking research on it? You know what it is, eh? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, okay, so I haven't had it. Yeah, but like, you know, and I saw that and I saw like, what am I going to do after life after football? And I had like visions of like a Spartan, which is a warrior. And then it had like my partner and my little baby there. And it's like, this is over with. And then there was a snake on the ground, which is temptation. There was all these little signs and stuff like that. And it's just like, that's gone. That You'll always be that warrior sort of person. I said, that's your life now as family. Mm. And that my dad was in the back. And my brother was in jail at that time. So there was a lot of shit going on. And I'm sitting there just in tears, like just going, fuck. And then dad was like, I'm proud of you and all this sort of stuff. For my forefathers were there going, wow. we're all proud of you. Like, it was fucking so intense. Jesus. It was crazy, man. Yeah. It was crazy. And then we went for like... 20 minutes man and I was just there and I was like and just sort of disappeared I was like wow and how were you after that I was just like it's just like a whole big fucking weight just lifted off me off my off, I just like just felt free yeah. and I was so happy that my dad watched me yeah. saw me play for Australia saw me win grand finals saw me like play for New South Wales my brother's okay like this is like footy that's why I, like, I never identify that's why my transition into footy from footy into like just being fucking normal dude it's easy because I never looked at myself as like just a footballer. Mm. You know what I mean? It was just something that I was really, I was just good at. Yep. And I would just rather be known as a better fucking person, better human, you know, better father, better, all these other things that are, mean a lot more than, mean a lot more to me than just Willie Mason, the footballer. Yeah, right. You know, so the things like that have helped me along the way with, um, you know, just dealing with things like, because a lot of people just don't know, they don't know what they do after, after footy. Yeah. Because they only identify as a footy player. Well, how many foot? Fucking mate, the amount of, amount of skills that you learn as a football player, the leadership skills, all this kind of stuff, mate. CEOs would beg to have our leadership skills. It takes them twenty years to get it. We get yeah. a fucking real fast run at it. You know what I mean? Like everything that we learn, like you put that into a normal job, everything that you did in footy, people forget about that. Like how disciplined you are, how focused you are. Like over everything that you are as a foot to be a great football player, you put that in as a whatever job you're going to do, you will nail it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not its not that, you know what I mean? Like, people just forget, oh, I'm just a football player. Fuck, I'm, I'm going into this other one. I don't know what to do. No, you just got to go, well, whatever I fucking just focused on there for your last 20 years or 15 years, yeah. put that same energy into that. Yeah, and the skills that you've and acquired the skills that, that Because of the skills that you require and you, you've re you required, mm. they're fucking phenomenal. Yeah. It's a different way of looking at it. It's a far more positive way of looking at it. Because yeah. you hear players that just get really stuck in a rut after mm. they finish playing. Almost just get consumed by yep. you, a, a loss almost. Like the loss yeah, of the life like, they had. Yeah, and they do. And that's quite sad, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's why I try and tell these, like the, the players, even the current, like the retired players, that, mate, we've learned so much as as players. you just got to put channel that energy and all, into, or everything that we've learned into yeah. into whatever you're doing. Because you've already shown the, uh, a level of like commitment yeah. to being successful. Like all right? these words that you need to be great at football you put that into something else yep. you're going to be great at that yeah you know, your work ethic all this kind of stuff discipline punctuation all that kind of stuff just like i don't know it's just not it doesn't seem that difficult to me mm. you've uh you obviously achieved many many things in uh the sporting world where does making the finals of hell's kitchen yeah i should have won break? that you know <laughs> fucking deborah <laughs> i love debbie I'm, I'm, and i've got a great relationship with fucking marco pierre white still do you? yeah and so he, how does Hell's Kitchen work exactly? What was that experience? Well, it was a, like? well, it was all about like teamwork, and like, what, have been, what have I been doing yeah. for the last yeah. fucking seventeen years? Like just like you got to had you had the strongest team, got everything delegated, and I was like I was I did that for fucking years. Mm. So like it wasn't about being necessarily being the best cook because mm. Deborah, the lady who won it, was the best cook. You know what I mean? She's a yeah. mother. She's a grandmother. She loved cooking for her life. And I would have felt bad if I beat her. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, yeah. I was the captain of my, of my side. We had Gaz from fucking Geordie Shaw. <laughs> so me, yeah, oh, Gaz, yeah. so me, Gaz and I, snip, Gaz and I fucking uh, worked. We, we killed it. We killed it. And we could have – we had, we had a, um, an option to get, to, to get rid of Deborah because she was the weakest in that thing. I said, not fucking getting rid of Deborah. She's a legend. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we could have if we were about – we feel being snakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, no, nah, we're not getting rid of fucking Deb. She's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she's the original fucking Pippa. <laughs> she's the OG Pippa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, anyway, so we end up getting to the, so us three, us three were in the final three, Deb, Gaz, and myself. And then like, like she won. 
Are so, you in a situ- in that situation? Are you sometimes a bit like fuck life's funny or like was, weird? Like yeah. I'm in this. I'm in there I'm in fucking cooking learning how to show, fucking cook with Marco you know, Pierre White. Could dude- you cook before that? I could cook okay, but I'm fucking I'm Ark's Rennie and all the boys, mate. They come over. I'm cooking meatballs and steak and stuff like that. I know. I'll fucking ring Marco Pierre White, Facetime him, and like because I've got a great relationship with him. I don't know why <laughs> we just got along together. Yeah, and um. Mate, I'll just say, hey, I'm cooking this lamb and he'd fucking send me the instructions and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed at his house when I went over to Bath. Like, like he's oh, a really? massive big mansion. Um, yeah, like he, um, I went over there in 2018. So he's got about 60 restaurants and all these hotels. It was like 1,800 pound a night to stay at one of his places. Wow. I didn't even see him. He just said, you're welcome, big fella. Blah, 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 blah. It was just a shitload of piss on this massive, massive room. It's about as big as this joint. Huh. Stayed there for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't pay a cent. Wow. Didn't pay a cent. Hectic. It was right in the middle of London. And it was like summertime. It was just pumping. And I was just in and out, just doing, oh, mate. Mate, how good it is It was that? fucking so good. But he's, so, he's like, we just had a really great relationship because back to when, just say, like his mum died at a similar age as my dad. Mm. And that drove him. And like we're sitting in fucking on George Street, right? Mm. Two grown ass men outside having a smoke. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't even smoke. I don't smoke. I've said it twice now. <laughs> but both times, like chefs just fucking smoke. Yeah, you got chef. they yeah, just yeah, like yeah. darts up everywhere. Yeah. Sitting having a smoke with him, and then like he starts just fucking talking about this and that, and we're both like fucking hugging and crying <laughs> wow. on the main street of like George Street, and that was the connection. Right, mm. and then we've just been connected from then on. And like, just say if I'm in England, I'll ring him. I stay at his house, and if he's over here, he'll like call me. And like, because just we just got this really weird relationship. Yeah. Like, he's one of the greatest chefs of all time, <laughs> and he's like, let me stay at his house. And like, even like one of his like, he's um, Andy Bennett. One in he he was his like sous chef, and he's like. What the fuck? I said, he, why? I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, so we just got along. He goes, he has never fucking talked to anyone like that. I said, well, fuck. I don't know. It's just got something in common, mate. Yeah. That's really got him in, baby. It was just a really good relationship and it's fucking unreal because he's a great man. That's so funny. You know, and it's just like, and he goes, you should have won, big fella. I said, oh, I said, I would have felt bad if fucking. <laughs> Deb didn't win it, <laughs> but she, you know, you know, really got me because, like, you know, when you do interviews and stuff, and like she was saying, she goes, you know what, I just really want to win because, like, I, I'm getting older and my my kids and that, they don't really come over that much, and I want to cook for them and cook great, and I'm like, I'm nearly crying, going, fuck, fight, beat, I don't want to win, <laughs> no, I yeah, don't yeah. want to win, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. and I actually, I actually didn't even put like my hundred percent effort in. Like to win because it was like I was cooking some roast chicken or some shit like that. She's, she, she, I think she's cooked about a thousand of them. Yeah, I've cooked fucking none. <laughs> and Gaz is like sort of we we're, we're both we had a fucking good time. Me and Gaz. Yeah, <laughs> he seems like he. We he did some shows. We were fucking time. on. Yeah, he seems like <laughs> he seems like he likes a good time. He's a good dude, mate. Um, so we had our own little fucking uh, shit, like our own wardrobes and shit. So he was just in mine. We were just having a good time all the time. Just fucking s- stealing bottles of wine and shit like that. And then we'd go and film and fucking, <laughs> it was fun. It was six weeks. It was fucking great. Is there any reality show you've been, like, have you been offered ones where you're like out not in a million years? Yeah, like that, you that could... celebrity get me out of here. I'm oh, that yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. I'm never doing that. If, if you see me. Bachelor. If you ever see <laughs> me. you can't oh, do that. That's brave. Could you imagine? <laughs> if, you ever see, if you ever see me sitting there breathing deeply and then someone's fucking raiding my fucking cha-cha. Yeah, dude. I've given up on life. <laughs> <laughs> That's I've one way of putting it. Breathing you know I mean? deeply. I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well you, well, you didn't move that well when you, oh, fuck off. I'll be like, get fucked. I am not, what would you know? <laughs> copping a fucking, oh, just fuck. copping a massive, just hammering from someone. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. For mate, not nailing no, the I hammer the fucking, the missile, the missile's on there. Yeah. Magnus, yeah, 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 you yeah. fucking, <laughs> that, you know, I was going to do that SAS show because yeah. I like that show. Because it's fucking pushed you to the limit, but I fucking um, fucking tore my pec the day before. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't think Sam Burgess's shoulders been the same. No, Poor mate. Bastard. No. Did he fuck that up doing us? Yeah. Oh, at the end, but he, he was already fucked. His shoulders already. fucked anyway, and then he's had to hold on to like a wire. And he had end. to go through that fucking small little yeah. thing, and it, it fucked him. Couldn't fit. That um, showed how much of an animal he is. Eh? He's a beast, mate. He oh, killed that. You need Sammy on here. He's oh, maybe we'd love to have him on. He's I don't think he's too guy. keen on doing potties, at least. No, Again, no, no, not with, no. like, fucking randoms like us. He needs a couple like of years just to fucking... Um, people need, people need to see, him. like, yeah. what sort of bloke he is. And, and he's a genuine man. And, like, the amount of shit that he's been through in the last three or four years, maybe longer, mm. it's an absolute load of shit, mate. He's one of the nicest blokes. Yeah, genuine, right. loyal, mm. everything like that. That's what I hate about the... 
the mainstream media what they did to him. Yeah, I know he fucked up here and there, but not to not that to extent. the degree, not to that yeah, extent right. where he they fucking paint him like that. Yeah, mm. okay, unbelievable. He's he's a fucking legend. Well, he was he's a weapon one of on us. that he's show, dude. Fucking, he was a fucking he's a beast, man. That was ridiculous. He came across w- fucking well in SAS. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. He came across like yeah. a because like that's a what he's like. Great human. He's just like that. He's not fake. He's not like that. He just comes on here. He's just an honest bloke. Mm. You know, um, so me and him got something in common as well. Like, like his old man died same same time, yeah, same yeah, time. It's yeah. like mine. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just like that's why we're sort of like we're about ten or twelve years apart, but we connected as soon as we met. Like I was at a different like time in my like career, and he was like in his prime. I'm like, I'm not fucking with him. <laughs> Go do your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on the other side and pick on the old boys, <laughs> mate. Thanks for coming in. It's been fucking great yeah. to sit down and have appreciate a yarn. It. Appreciate it. It's been Congratulations a long time. With levels and time, everything. Great yarn. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. You no going the game? No, That's we're a, doing a live stream live again. Stream. Oh, yeah. People enjoy our pain too much, so you know we may good, as well. Pain fine. sells, mate. If I wasn't fucking going to the game, <laughs> yeah. I'm knocking on that door. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. We're going to line you up for one when the when the comp gets a bit more entertaining. Yes, yes. Yeah. get through that. Like what? we'll get through the bullshit. Get to the twenty round twenty two or something. Yeah. It's got to be a Penrith Power or some shit. Yeah, the man, there'll be something. I know you like the Manly. How do you think? What's Manly well, doing? Well, well let's let me just let me just consult. What do you think about Matt Lodge going to Manly? It'd be good. I'm happy with that. I'm like he can fucking play. He can play. Be focused, yeah, and like he's he, just, he didn't. Sh- he didn't suit. All right, I got it. Roosters Manly Thursday the third of August. Let's do it. Yeah, do it. Beautiful. Done. Done. Lock it in. Wonderful. Right, Thanks, right, thank mate. you, mate. Could you two just not talk anymore?